waiting you guys i needed some extra time to get myself together this is my first virtual sip and paint in so long um if you're here thank you so much for waiting while i got everything started i'm just making sure my screen looks good uh i'm watching it also on youtube in front of me so that i can see what you guys see <gasps> there we are okay so hello welcome and welcome to the little world of critterosity if you have never done a sip and paint with me before during the pandemic I was doing a lot there are plenty of saved I want to say YouTube videos but also um, saved uh, uh, reels on Instagram so you can always scroll back and see but my name is Eva Eva Lacey Critterosity I have thrown up a Venmo because hey this is free I'm at, I'm expecting nothing you don't need to tip I'm not gonna come back and see who viewed it doesn't matter to me. I have people that sometimes yell at me after a live and say, why didn't you have a way to tip you? So don't say I didn't. <laughs> um, but there is no obligation if you like what I'm doing and you would like me to continue once in a while offering um, to offer some free sip and paints. I'm happy to do that. I also was going to start uh, mini workshops where you can do this with me and it's $5 a ticket. You get a private link and only those who purchase get to see the videos. But then from time to time, throw in a free one where if you guys feel like tipping, great. If you don't, it's completely free. I am a family friendly account. So this is great for kids, adults, couples to work together, best friends to sit together and do something on the weekend and I am just now starting to get to that place where I can do this again. So I'm very happy to spend today with you guys and what better than a little crystal squatch that you guys are gonna learn. If you want to join the chat, you have to be signed into a free YouTube account. There's a little chat box and I can see what you guys are writing. We can have conversation. You can ask questions like what kind of brush is that? Sometimes when I'm teaching, I just kind of get lost in it and then I forget like, oh, I didn't tell them what kind of brush this was or <laughs> what color paint. Um, you can use anything you want, any medium. If I'm painting and you wanna do crayons, you wanna do colored pencils, none of that matters to me. This is 100% for you to do in your own creative way. Um, the other thing is I will talk to you about the ones I'm using. I have an Amazon storefront that just seems very pointless. <laughs> nobody uses it, nobody cares, I understand. Um, but I do have like a good list going of the things I use. If you use the link, that I will leave at the end of this video. Um, I'll put it in my description and kind of fix it up. I'll leave an Amazon link. You can also subscribe to my channel if you'd like to support. That's the best way to support me is by hitting the subscribe button. Um, and then that way you see all my content without missing out on it. I will be coming out with more vlogs. It's been crazy uh, a lot <laughs> over the last three years and I'm just starting to find a break. So this should have given you enough time to get yourself your favorite sip, your favorite drink, um, the best part about being at home is you can stay in your PJs for us here in Southern California day it is a rainy day it is cloudy best day to light candles and just be quiet and enjoy our day. So I do encourage you picking out music to play in the background. That is why I don't have any music playing in the background because I want you to be able to still hear me, but then do that. You can also put this on mute and miss out on anything I'm talking about. I do give instruction and my sip and paints are unique because we do a sketch and then the paint. And I find that if you've done the drawing for yourself, you remember where you put things, all of that. If I just gave you a printout, I feel like you wouldn't know my character. You wouldn't understand it. Um, I took elements of people's, uh, one of their favorite crystal squatches I've made, which are my own original characters. And I've kind of mashed it up with a new body. So I'm just letting you guys know a lot of you liked one particular character and um, yeah, we're gonna keep it kind of simple. So any colors I use, any materials I use, you do not not need to have the same materials but I'm going to show you how I make my art the way I do all right let me take a sip of my drink there we go okay so we're going to start off with a pencil and we're going to do some light sketches don't worry about the character you see on my page just look at the one I'm drawing so that way you can get it fairly close so we're going to draw a shape kind of like that it's flat and then we have this curve coming around. I also should mention in my video here, you're gonna see critterosity.subly.me in the top right corner. 
That is if you want to uh, support monthly. You can also do it through my Shopify. You just don't get all these extra bonus things that they get. Um, but I do have a Critterosity ink and paint workshop where we learn crafts and different projects. And if you're in that and you're wondering where your video is, don't worry, it's coming. I have been so busy the last few days doing so many things for wonderful people with wonderful people and no obligation. I get to go because I love these humans. Um, but I haven't been able to sit down and work on it. So that is coming out uh, later today. Okay, so now we're gonna draw kind of that same shape right here, but we're kind of tilting it outwards. So again, a big shape and then a flat. Okay, and I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. And joining the chat is the best way to talk to me while I work live. And again, just sign up for a free YouTube account. It does not hurt to have. I've been on YouTube forever. They're not trying to sell you anything. Actually, it's probably the best platform. And I think it's $10 a month. Maybe I pay a little bit more. I, I haven't caught up in a long time of what I'm paying, but it's like 10 to $13 a month. I get no commercials, no nothing. I get free movies. I've been able to watch all my favorite Don Bluth movies on here. Um, we're gonna also go right here with another flat one. So you got two of the same shapes for the bottom of the feetsies. And we can always round these out or shape them differently later. Just kind of draw that. Now, I'm drawing really dark so you guys can start to see where we're going, but the really dark lines are to show you what you need to copy me doing. Don't draw any of this yet. Um, but yeah, so if you want to watch me on YouTube or rewatch these without commercials, you just pay a monthly like everything. Everything costs, right? There's nothing really for free. That's why I try to make this video for free so that you guys don't have to uh, worry about paying anything and can enjoy some time together with your family, your friends, your loved ones. All right, so we're gonna draw a line coming out. I want you to draw a tail the way you want, but please note, they usually have some sort of like leaf coming off the edge. So if you draw the tail coming out, leave some room. Don't draw too close to the body and make it short because you won't be able to fit the leaves. You can even have the tail come all the way around through the back. You can like stop here and then continue on. If you choose to do a very long tail like that, what I do is I go ahead and draw it on the page. I just go really lightly and then I erase this in between area. So it's a way without having to guess, like where would it kind of come out? You should be consistent with your art and follow through and then erase the things you don't want. Always draw so feather soft you can erase it. Now I'm not gonna do that kind of tail. I'm gonna keep mine very little cause mine's just like a little baby. So I'm just gonna add a little curl here at the end. It's like a little mouse tail if you will. Let's see how many people we have live. Oh, we have five people watching live. Welcome five people watching live. Hello, hello, wonderful to see you here. Hope you're having a beautiful Sunday. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to find where we want the face to be. So even though I drew my face here, if you want it lower, it's gonna make it look even cuter, even more baby-like, because babies haven't grown fully into their facial structure. <laughs> I don't know how to say that, but um, their, their skull area, it all changes, right? Our face changes. So sometimes they have a larger forehead than us grown-ups do. So you can start this little face a little lower. You can keep it about where mine is, or you can draw it higher so it looks like it's looking up. That's up to you how you want to draw it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make kind of a curve and these are my little guidelines. So see how the body's kind of shaping this way? I'm gonna follow that same curve and draw a little bit of a guideline down the center. Now, I love using my hand like a compass. So instead of being right over it and doing this, it makes you really boxed in. And when you try to draw like that, it tends to um, not feel very fluid. I'm gonna grab a scratch paper so I can show you guys a few things as we go. Um, because I always like to give you guys options and think outside the box. That's the number one thing is we don't have to draw the exact same because we are not the same human. You're not me. I'm not you. We're going to draw differently. And sometimes, sometimes you guys draw so good. It makes me want to rip my paper up and say, well, shoot, they're better than I am. So, um, so when you're drawing like this, it makes it hard. It makes it limited. Um, but when you're when you're drawing cartoons, you should have that free range. Look how far how far I can go. If I'm doing this, 
and I'm trying to do that and I'm stopping and it's shaking. So you want to make sure you really start to use your hand loosely. You want to work from the full wrist or the whole arm. If you guys have ever followed animators drawing live, they're going to tell you that when they draw on their page, they use their whole arm. If you're over it and hovered and you're super close and you're drawing this, it just makes your whole world shrink down. Make it bigger. Be able to see your whole page. Use your hand, use your wrist. It's lots of practice, okay? Um, now we're gonna draw a little, little bit of a rainbow. Wherever you've decided to make the nose, that's where that goes. <laughs> nose goes, there you go, rhyming all the time. Don't you guys love it? I know you do. Okay, I'm gonna back up just a little so you guys can see a bit more. So we've got all that. Now what we're gonna do, and great news, you guys are on YouTube, which means you can pause and rewind anytime starting right now and you won't miss out on anything. You can also just stop, grab your cursor, bring it back, tap somewhere back and you'll catch up to us or um, you can rewatch this in the future and keep working on it. The best part about these videos, you can redraw as many times as you want. So I'm gonna keep up the speed. And if you're like, wait, I'm not there yet, guess what, you can hit the pause button. You can stay behind wherever you need to go. All right, so that way the video isn't two hours long. All right, now you get to choose how you want your nose. Now, before you draw what I drew, okay, before you draw what I just drew on my guideline, let me give you some options. We've got all different noses for our squatches. We've got a cute little nose, a teeny little nose. We've got ovals. Um, we've got a little bit of a bridge. And then what I do is one, two, three underneath. Okay, I call that the troll's nose. Poppy has a nose kind of like that. Same with her friends. They kind of have the little three loop nose. She's a little dirty. I, I rescued these. They were gonna get thrown in the trash and I grabbed them. But see those little noses? I love those. Love it, love it, love it. Then you have um, um, a nose that's a little bit more angled, angular. And then you can do two bumps in those nose, those nose, the, that nose. So think about what you want. I already had mine drawn, so I just picked, I just picked this nose. <laughs> Pick your nose. Uh, family friendly jokes, okay? This is what we do here. This is what we do. Um, you guys can also write in the comments and let me know if there's things you, you have questions about and I'll try to get back to the comments later. Um, but for now, let's just keep moving. Okay, we're gonna draw two rainbows that are kind of skinny. The one on the left is farther away, so it's a little smaller. The one on the right is a little bit bigger. If you want them really big, draw them really big. If you want little tiny eyes, you can. Now let me give you some other eyes you can draw, that's right. This is what the scratch paper's for. All right, we can do, you can do little dots for the eyes. Those are really cute. You could do closed eyes. You don't need to be really great at art to draw that, I'm sure. Just two U shapes. You guys draw U's all the time, right? Um, you can do U shapes with a couple lashes. You could do um, a more thin U shape. Okay, so still that same kind of arch. Um, and then if you want, you can even draw lashes off of it. You could draw some eyelids, like two little triangle shapes or a little pizza shape. That would look like they're sleeping. Um, you could do kind of an almond shape coming down and then have your eyes inside of that. You could have the eyes just circles and looking up. Okay, so really think about what you want. And then my other favorite thing I will do is like, I'll put the eyes over it and I'll try to see it through my page and kind of see where I would want them to go. You can spread them out, make them closer. That's the fun part about drawing. You get to choose however you want to do it. And nobody's going to tell you, uh-uh, not me. I won't do that. Okay. Now I'm going to draw a little cheek line. If you've decided to go with this kind of eye, got our little cheek lines. Just very soft, don't draw too hard because the harder you draw, the more it's gonna show up through your painting. Mm-hmm. Everyone take a sip again if you haven't lit any candles, you don't have any incense going, you haven't played any music yet, make sure you do that because uh, you need to feel very relaxed as you work. Okay, I'm just going with a cute, simple smile. So I'm doing an upside down U shape. I mean, I'm doing a U-shape, an upside-down rainbow, but it's technically a U-shape. Let's bring our little character a little closer so you guys can enjoy her as well. She likes to watch you guys do art. 
Okay, and now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a little curl at the top of the head. This is like a little leaf, kinda, or a little leaf, like a little vine coming down. If you don't like that, you don't have to draw that. And then we're going to make a little bit of a curve coming down to where it starts to match up with that. So I've just kind of drawn a little bit of a line so it makes a little widow's peak. All right, for my little vine, I'm gonna follow the shape I already made. This is the shape I already made it. And now I'm gonna curve in a little bit. So we have, don't worry about right here because this is gonna be a horn. So we wanna just kind of cut in, leave this side light of your shape. My Reminder as we go through, you are not me. Yours is gonna look different than mine, so please, please, please do not get upset if it's not perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. I'm not perfect, I've just practiced a lot. So I know how to make my lines and I get very comfortable with it. Hi Elizabeth, thank you so much for tuning in live. We now have eight people watching live. Thank you so very much. I'm sorry if the camera shakes a little, it's kind of connected a bit to my desk and every now and then I bump it and I am so sorry about that. Okay, now we're gonna bring that line a little bit further to the top of the foot. Um, now, when you're drawing lines, they should not match up. And what I mean by that is, let's say this is the foot, this is the outside shape of the body, and then we're drawing that line. You shouldn't have lines connecting from two different things. It gets very confusing. So if you're gonna draw it somewhat cutting in or coming close, you should draw it and connect it somewhere where it doesn't look like one continuous line. We're gonna show that they're two different lines. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna start to make a little arm coming in here. And however you want your arm is up to you. If you wanna keep it really simple, draw pointy hands. That way you don't have to worry about fingers. But if you wanna make fingers, I just kinda do a one, two, three. This is the most simple, easy there are no rules in cartooning but anatomy does help to know how the body is and how how the arms fold but this is why i love cartooning i can bend all those rules okay i can bend a lot of it so we're gonna make the little arm and again please draw softly i'm drawing really hard so you can see my lines i'm gonna go down it almost looks like a leaf and then it comes up there's the little arm coming downward okay now, I want to add little fingies to these, so I'm just going to add little fingertips. All right, and I'm just going to go one, two, three. Now that I have the arm there, now I know kind of where I want it. Two, three, and I dip it back. But if you want to keep it easy, just keep the point so it looks like a little leaf kind of pointing down. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to draw the other hand and I have mine kind of like they're giggling and they're just kind of like, you know, their little hand comes up. So I'm gonna draw a little leaf going this way and I'm gonna close this one up. This one's kind of connected to the body, so it's not closed. Here's the shoulder, here's the under underarm. This one is kind of curved around the body connected, so I'm gonna bring that one up. And Friendly reminder, you can pause and rewind while I'm live. And when I'm not live, you guys can fast forward as well. So don't be afraid to just go back. One, two, three. I'm keeping this as simple as I can for you guys so that you enjoy your art. Um, it's kind of like dance. And I grew up a dancer. I had dance class since I was a little girl. And what we realized was trying to make really intricate movements and nobody being able to match them up was not very pretty to look at, but making very simple dance moves that everybody could hit and understand at the same time, the dance was much more fluid and looked so much better. Simplicity in its finest is like, I'm just saying, there, there's nothing better than making a very simple piece of art. Until you start to get a little bit better, you can make it more difficult, more difficult, more difficult. But here, let's just keep it simple. Sweetheart, that's what I say, that's my kiss. K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, sweetheart. Um, hi, Bricktastic, it's been a long time since I've seen anyone use a regular pencil, a number two pencil. <gasps> this one is a number two pencil. It even has bite lines, but that's not from me. I rescued this pencil. 
I usually rescue pencils when I see them at like yard sales and stuff. I'll buy them up. Uh, great way to save your money too. Okay, inside the eyes, we are going to draw the eyeballs. Now I kind of have my eyeballs looking in. A little cross-eyed, but cutesy. A little cross-eyed, but cutesy. So there we go. And next we're gonna move to where the horns go. And so rule of thumb with my little characters, I like the horns, if they're more, if they're up more, that makes them more of an adult squatch. If they're a little lower, they're kind of a juvenile or sweet little innocent baby squatch. They're kind of littles. So I'm going to make mine small little horns and I'm just kind of choosing a spot right here. So what I do is I curve the edge once I know where I want it to go. You can draw a little bit of a line and then just kind of curve around that edge right there. If you want it to be more rounded, it can be more rounded. You want them even shorter, they'll be a little bit squattier. That's perfect. If you want them to be really long, I mean, this is your character. Make it fun, do what you want with it. Um, to match a close to the other side, reminder, this character's kind of turning their head. So we're getting this side is much bigger than this side's gonna be. So we're gonna go a little smaller. I kind of draw a little bit of a line to see where about I should start that one. So I go a little bit at an angle and then I'm going to start just the edge of it. So I'm kind of seeing how it matches up. You could even draw that middle line first and then just kind of shape around it. That's up to you how you want to do that. And now we're going to add any kind of thing to the horn. I do all different kinds. You can do a horn that has like little waves. You could do a horn with some different lines through it, different line weights, meaning one is thick, one is skinny, one is thick, one is skinny. You can do a bunch of lines or you can just do a couple lines. That's up to you. Um, you could even do loop-de-loops. So again, think about what you wanna do before you start committing to that. I'm gonna do a couple little lines. I kind of follow that shape too that I did. So if I started here, I do that. This one's going outward, so I kind of go the opposite direction, changing the shapes. But if you don't know how to do that and you can't figure it out, don't worry about it, just draw some lines through it. Or leave it exactly as it is, just leave it plain. And then what you would do is later, we're not gonna use these lines. If you wanna erase that middle line, you can, but I'm just gonna draw with my marker exactly what I wanna keep and get rid of the other stuff. Take a sip, you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna work on the tail and I'm gonna make these like little leaves coming off the tail because they're crystal squatches. They need to blend in, they need to camouflage. So any way you'd like to do this, up to you. I'm just kind of following the curve of the tail and I wanna thicken the tail a little bit. So I'm gonna make it a little thicker than it was coming off the back of him or her or whatever, whatever character you have. And I'm gonna do some little eyebrows and if they're upward, you guys should know this, but I'm also going to explain. If they're upward eyebrows, okay? Upward and a little bit of a, a little turn means kind of innocent, sweet, happy. If you do kind of a U shape going up, could be a little bit sad. If you go down, we all know this is angry. Um, and then you also can leave the eyebrows off if you want. Um, and another one is like, I've done curious where one is kind of flat and then one is up. So they're kind of like, hmm. So now again, think about your eyebrows and what your plan is. I love glasses, so I'm gonna draw some really cute glasses on the character. Love glasses. I just think it adds to everything, everything adorable. So I'm drawing some little glasses. I'm gonna start to shape the back out. Now, we both draw in different places, different ways. So um, I'm gonna curve this down from where the horn is. I want the horn to actually be level on the fur. This top part is gonna come back. What did I say? Kind of draw through, and then you can always erase the part you don't want. So we can get rid of that. But that way, at least it's a consistent line. It doesn't look like you skipped and then started somewhere weird. Just draw softly and then pick the line you like. You can always draw several times. You guys, I didn't draw my guideline once. 
I draw it several times and then my eyes start to pick out the best part of that. Um, and then we're gonna draw a little bit of a booty. So right under my little arm that's connected here, I'm gonna make a little boot boot. Boop boop be doop. And the little foot is just going, little foot, aw. Um, little foot is kind of straight on. We're not really seeing the knee, so you don't have to really draw that. Again, a cartoon, I change it up all the time. But I wanted that curve to be like a little bit of a, C, a backward C. And now that little tail is kind of pushing him off the ground. So he's kind of leaning forward like, ooh, what is that? And he's kind of, imagine like lifting out of your chair. Um, his little booty sticking up and then he's got his little tummy. Now you can make a little X for a belly button, a little dot for a belly button or no belly button. That's up to you. But I think I want to do a little X on this one. All right, and now we have the crystal squatch part where the crystals are popping out of the head. Um, so we're going to draw a line down. Again, going fast because you can rewatch this at any time. You can rewind already right now. You can drag the little red line back wherever you need to go. Click somewhere on the video that further that goes further back. All right, and then we're gonna make a arrow. Look, see, it's an arrow, it's pointing up. Try to get it somewhat even, somewhat even is good. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit so you guys can see better. We're gonna make the little arrow. And then I go at an angle coming in. I don't do a straight line, you can if you want to, but I do more of an angle to keep that cartoony vibe up. All right, and then once you've done that, you can choose if you just want one sticking out of their head. If you want another one, um, let's draw it a different way this time just so you guys can see the difference. I'm gonna draw a diamond, so I make a point. And I'm gonna do that same point below, but look, it overlaps, so it's kind of hiding behind there. From this little kite, this little thing, we need a little kite needs a tail. Okay, so it looks like a little kite sticking up right now. And then again, I angle this one in. So you drew your diamond, you draw right from the center point, you bring it down and this, and what I do with the top one is I try to make it look a little translucent, so I very softly make a line in the back. Now, when we draw with our marker to keep the lines we like, you're gonna end up probably not drawing that. You'll just kind of use it with your paint to add a little line. And I'm gonna make one more, like I made this one, but more skinnies. So I'm gonna make my point just a little bit skinnier, and then I'm gonna draw it coming in. See how it brings everything back to center? So it kind of pulls everything towards a point which guides our eyes back down to the face. Best part now, there's no rules. You can make as many little filler leaves as you want. You can have some leaves sticking up off the top. You can make several leaves. You could do some little curls to kind of go with the curl on the head. You can add a curl on the side. You can um, add little branches with little leaves and flowers. That is why crystal squatches and regular squatch sprouts are so much fun because you can make all the leaves. Now you'll see that this one I taught for my uh, DIY reward doesn't have crystals at the top is because they actually got another option to do something special. I haven't heard from anybody yet, so I don't think they're gonna do it. But because April is usually springtime, I do my squatch sprouts that usually just have little um, leaves coming out of their head but I gave them the option if they wanted to add something special, um, they could actually still add crystals coming off the top. So that's why that one doesn't really look like a crystal squatch. It looks more like a squatch sprout. So yeah, um, that's kind of how they're done. You guys can also see my little character in the corner. You can use that as reference and kind of see what we've done. Um, but how much you add for the foliage is up to you. Okay, so now that we've got it all and I'm happy with it, I don't wanna add anything else. I'm gonna take a permanent marker. Now, if you only have the thick permanent markers, that's fine. Um, but the best ones are going to be a very thin permanent marker. And I think I have one. If I don't, I have another pen ready to go. Um, I thought I brought it down, but I guess I didn't. I'm sorry about that. I like to have everything so I can show you guys options. Mine is waterproof and it's a zebra pen and it's kind of a blue and it has this really nice fine tip on it um 
and I'm just going to go fast. Not, I'm not talking like speed racer, but I'm not going to stay in one spot for too long. Do not color in the eyes. Don't do that because what happens is when you get water and the paint, it's going to smear the marker. Even if it's a permanent marker, it still is going into um, all the fibers of the paper and it doesn't ever necessarily dry. So I want you guys to really remember to move kind of quick. Don't spend too long. If you remember where a line is, you don't have to do anything. You can just leave it where it is. Um, like I don't need to draw my little lines for cheeks. I just want you guys to visually see and get the mu um, muscle memory to know like, oh, there were lines there, I remember that. But also after you trace it, I want you guys to take a photo of it with your phone, even if you're using the phone um, right now for me. Uh, just close down the app really quick, take a photo, and then you can um, reference your your lines because once we start painting with marker, you usually can't see those lines anymore. So you guys are really fortunate you have phones these days. I'm gonna continue this belly line down. The foot is kind of peeking out behind it. So now you can start to round your shapes a little bit more. I kind of was giving you guys a simple like, here, draw this line, make this kind of flat. So you get the idea of different um, ways that we can draw things. You don't always have to make a foot perfectly oval um, when you're making like little footy characters. You can actually like um, draw a flat line and wherever there's a flat line in cartooning, a curve should usually be somewhere else. So we drew a flat line, a curve, kind of a curvy line, like an S curve. All right, we've got this is really sharp straight lines, but what we did was we angled them in so they still have kind of a cartoony feel to it. Um, you're late, glad we can rewatch later. Thanks for the heads up. Oh, thank you, Lisa, and thanks to all 10 people watching right now. I truly appreciate you all being here. Okay, now I'm gonna draw the little fingers. Go slow, but don't spend too long in one spot because again, it won't dry. You can even add little furry lines if you want. If you don't want fur lines, don't draw them. Um, I want like a few little curves here and there, which I'll show with my paint as well. I've got my cute little smile on him. We got a little belly button. And reminder, a permanent mar marker works the same, but the skinny permanent markers are going to be your best friend with this. Um, when they're too thick, they end up taking a lot of paint to cover over them. All right, I'm adding a little bit of a fur line as I go. We've got the little boom boom. We've got the tummy line finishing out where that widow's peak was. It came down. You can see I didn't draw a line here. If you are afraid you're going to draw every line unless you erase it, make sure you erase things you don't want before you start tracing. But I know for a fact like exactly where I want to go with my character. So I'm not worried about it. Okay, I've got my little horn here. I have my little horn here. Okay. I'm not worried about lashes or anything being thick. If you want like actual lines, you can draw lines for lashes to remind yourself to make those. But um, I'm not sure yet if I want lashes on my character. I might just want really thick lash lines, but not actual little lashes poking out. Okay, so we're drawing a fun little tail. I'm not drawing the tail line unless it goes in between my little kind of leaves. leaves. Um, I'm so glad you love the belly button. Thank you so much. Okay, now we have a line coming down. Now what I've decided is, for me, I wanna kinda hide where they're coming in, otherwise it just looks like they're just sticking right to his forehead. I'm gonna add some little leaves here and there. Just a little bit of something to kind of hide those. And then I can start to draw. So that way they go into the leaves and the little flowers and whatever it is down there. Um, instead of just connecting directly to the forehead because that would be kind of kind of weird if you've already done it it's okay don't get mad you can always redraw and rewatch and change your character's look you guys closing eyes opening eyes can change a character completely you could draw this 15 times and change things put glasses on take glasses off uh, change the tail, change the horns, and you could make all different characters over and over again just by changing a couple things each time you draw. So don't get upset if your first one isn't perfect. It's not going to be. These are not your characters. They're my characters. They are something I draw all the time. So I know how I like them. I know what aesthetic I like for them. Um, you have just started drawing these. Each character is completely different. So 
Um, don't beat yourself up if it's not coming out exact. Just practice again and draw again. Okay, and last but not least, I'm gonna draw my glasses. Boop. And I always start with the opposite of the way, um, if I'm right-handed, I'll draw my left first so that I can draw my right. If you're left-handed, draw the right and then your left so at least you can compare it. If you draw the left side first and then this, you're gonna cover it with your hand, vice versa. If I had drawn this side first, I'd be like, wait, I can't see what I did and it's not gonna be perfect. And because I did glasses, um, my left one is gonna be slightly smaller than the right one because we're seeing a turn of the character. So it's slightly left. Hello, Sonia, thank you so much for jumping in the chat. Hello, hello, we have 11 people live right now. This is awesome, you guys. I, I did not know what to expect today. Don't forget, take a sip of your drink. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you haven't turned on music yet, I, I suggest turning on some nice, soft music to listen to. Keep yourself calm. These characters are very calming powers, so they just make us feel very mellow. All right, now it comes down to cleaning up our character. I'm gonna see if I can do this without shaking you guys. Okay, we're good. I think I'm putting my foot against something. My little, um, <laughs> my little uh, stand is connected to, so I'm gonna try not to cross my legs towards the left. All right, now I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm just gonna erase anything I don't wanna keep. And I didn't do my little lines and my horns because I'm gonna work on those with my paint, so I don't wanna risk like adding more marker where I really don't need it. Um, I know that I do lines in my horns, so when I get to those, I'll know how to do it with my, with my stuff. All right, now, a great tip is if you have markers, color it first with markers even if it's not exact colors you love if you're going to paint over it with an acrylic or what i use is acrylic wash um, or acrylic gouache everybody says it different um, and that way you can cover over your marker after and i'm going to show you guys how i do that right now even though i have paints it speeds up the process a lot so when i'm teaching you guys I don't have to spend hours and hours and hours teaching it. Um, if I do virtual sip and paints, just so you guys know, I will be going marker to paint. So if you're wondering how that looks or what it is, it does not make it a cheat. It makes it really smart and it actually creates a really cool depth that you don't normally get. Sorry if I hit the camera, sorry about that. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna grab some marker colors. Again, just colors that are close enough to what I plan on painting. Doesn't have to be exact, just close enough. Now red is the only one you have to watch out for. Reds and pinks, they tend to bleed through the paint. So you have to be really careful with those. And you don't have to get every single color, but I'm grabbing some major colors of things that I think I'm gonna need to cover a lot. I'm using Copics. I'm using um, Artist Loft from the kind of cheaper brand from Michael's Arts and Crafts, which actually aren't that cheap. I've got concept ones I got from Jerry's Artorama back in the day. Um, yeah, Copics, Prismacolor. I mean, I just keep so many different ones through the years. Um, I'm gonna see if this one actually still works. It looks like it would. Nice. So do you see how quickly I can cover this without having to use paint and I don't have to worry about it getting mushy. I'm still gonna paint over the marker, but this at least gets the ink into the divots. Now I'm using watercolor paper, so mine is um, kind of got these divots all over. If you're using flat paper, um, that's totally fine. Just know flat paper might curl. That's why I love using watercolor paper. It's like my favorite paper to use. I love the dry texture. It allows me to um, kind of use the dry, dry paint process. Um, what else, what else do I love about it? It doesn't curl when I add a ton of water to it because it's watercolor paper. It's kind of built for that. It'll curl a little. You can always tape your paper down. You can put your paper on a, a little easel. I just don't, I for this one in particular, I just like to leave it flat. And that way you guys could see what I was doing anyway. If you guys have any questions, you can ask in the chat at any time. After that, um, or if you're not signed into your free YouTube account, you can always write in the comments. I won't be able to really see the comments until later, but I'll be able to respond. 
So right now this is a Prismacolor. This one I've had for years when I used to be a caricature artist. This one's just called Peach. Um, and I, I really do love the Prismacolor ones because they cover, the coverage of that works so well. Okay, and you'll see my marker's not moving. If your marker starts to blend, it's because it's not a waterproof marker or you color, you press down too hard and it's not dry. You can always come back to it a second day or a few hours later and just kind of let it absorb into the paper. Um, but it all depends on what paper you're using too. Um, mine is all watercolor, pretty much any time I do art. I'll also be live later today and saving to my Instagram. Um, I've got to work on a couple more sketches um, on Procreate for my upcoming um, commissions for people that ordered. And then I'll be starting my big commissions that people ordered because I need to get those done by the end of May, I want to say, or mid-May. So we have a lot to do. But yep, I just got all the divots have, have it. I'm going to show you guys up close what happens when you don't have those covered. Sorry, a little squatch. See? It tends to do that. Now, when you paint, it retracts. And if there's not something underneath it that when it retracts, it sees peach, what it'll do is it'll show white. So that's why also going with colored pencil or um, not colored pencil, sorry, going with marker is a really smart way to add coverage really fast and not have to paint as much. And you don't use up all your paint. Uh, watercolor paper is the only one I use and I love it. Exactly. I feel the same. I feel the same. Um, do I know what time? I know it'll be fairly quick after this one. I'm gonna take a little lunch break and then go live. Thank you so much for asking. We have 12 people watching. Thank you so very much, you guys. Take a sip of your drink. And is sip and paint after all? Okay, I'm gonna use this kind of brownish tone. These are not how it's gonna end. There's going to be way more color and brightness and it'll turn out pretty pastel when it goes um, into the final stage of paint. Right now I'm just giving some color underneath. So if the paint retracts, it shows this kind of goldish brown underneath and not white. So I just do a good enough job to get it covered. These brushes I've, or these brushes, these markers I've had for a long time. So I'm trying to use them up to put new ink in there. Okay, um, I'm gonna avoid any reds. Peach is okay, but pinks and reds, you really have to be careful unless you know for a fact, like it's totally fine. I'm not doing any white there. I don't have to worry about it. But I'm gonna leave the very top of my nose with a little bit of white because I don't wanna, um, I might wanna add a highlight and I don't want the pink to go into the white. You will see it happen. Now, this is gonna be really dark right now, but the best news is your paint that you use that's more pastels is actually going to look like a highlight. So it's really good to add this like darker tone to go back later and use this. It's gonna make this pop. So don't ever be afraid to mix your, um, do mixed media. Like take all different, to, or mixed mediums, I should say. Mix them all, try to get some new colors in them. Um, and then a lot of people use colored pencil after they're done painting over it and you get a really pretty like pastel color over the top. Um, it looks really neat. So I'm just adding this dark green towards the bottom, but I plan on doing kind of a rainbow at the top. So I'm gonna slowly stop using this as I get towards the top of the tail. So I'm gonna start here and then I'm gonna keep dragging. And then as I get about here, I'm gonna let it fade out and then I'll come back with other colors like a pink and a, a, pink and a purple that I wanna do. All right, the eyes are up to you. I'm gonna go really dark with this and then they'll get lighter as the light hits lower because remember, this is going to be a, a shadow kind of from the eyelashes. And I always tell people, if you're sitting next to somebody, look at each other's eyes. They're not pure white. They have like a, a tint to them. So um, definitely pay, pay close attention to things like that. Um, then I've got this kind of off-white yellow. Sorry, there come the, here come the sirens. And I guess it's not really a yellow. It's kind of like a peachy. I don't even know what that is. This is, and these are alcohol-based markers, just so you guys know. Um... Hmm. It doesn't say the color. It's like a number, so you have to know the number. I'm going to go with a different marker that I thought I grabbed. 
because I had kind of my greenish tone. There it is. So this is like a misty green. There's also like a misty blue. It's gonna look really weird at first, but this is gonna add a nice shadow when we add our paint over it. So just like the eye, I kind of match it up to create a little shadow in there. And when I say it speeds up the painting process, it really truly does. Um, you're gonna have to not use as much paint because your marker covered a good chunk of it and it just kind of gets lost in there. Um, you can also outline the character in a color with your paint. You can do line work or you can leave it black. Um, I'll probably use um, most of my paint to kind of make it softened. All right, so there we go. Just adding some of this. And then at the top, I'm going with pinks and purples. So I'm just gonna let this fade out here. And I'm not using pink or purple markers because um, those colors are super pretty just on their own. I know that this darker tone is gonna be really nice for my teal and then I'm gonna fade it out. So there's my markers. I didn't use them all. I just kind of brought a chunk over wondering which colors I was gonna use. And now we're in our next stage. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Lisa. That's the whole point, right? I used to watch Bob Ross and just, I wasn't painting. I just wanted to watch him work and it like mellowed me out. I loved it. Okay, so now we're gonna get down to painting. I just realized I never brought over my water cup. Oops, let me grab that. Okay, so we've got my little water cup here. A little bit of water. And I need a little bit of a napkin to wipe my brush off. I think I have some left over. Hold on one second. There we go. I have a little bit left over here from this one. Okay, so I just use any random napkins I have laying around, to be honest, to be honest, because you're gonna use them anyway. Um, all right, we're gonna start with peach or whatever color you want for the center. If he's blue and you want him a light blue, go for it. You don't have to make them the colors I'm making it. I just always like, I was telling my uh, DIY ornament peeps that made this one, I was like, to me, if they were, well, they are real characters, just so you know, but they're so fast and they're so little, we can't see them very well. So I try to document when I've seen them and what I thought they looked like. That's what all this is. Um, but I feel like whenever I see them in person, they almost have a peachy nectarine feel to them. They have like a soft, soft, soft fur. And then on the outside, it's like the longer fur. So I always go with just something soft so that all the color comes out on the bigger fur. And then I usually go with like a neutral color because um, they contrast really well and it looks really nice. But you could do all white. You could do a light blue to a dark blue, a dark blue to a light blue. I mean, squatches have no particular look. I just know what I like and what I feel. Um, I can really play up the colors on the outside and they look nice together. All right, let's talk paints. Um, you can use anything you want to color these. You could use all marker crayon, colored pencil, but if you wanna start getting the kits and things that I have, um, these are mostly Princeton brushes. They are super affordable. I am not sponsored by anybody. I just kind of go and buy them when I see them. You can find these at Michael's Arts and Crafts, but I will always preach to you guys that Art Supply Warehouse, I'm gonna sneeze. Am I gonna sneeze? She's gonna sneeze. Hold on, what? Huh? There it went. Okay, <laughs> we're good. I am a human. Um, so, I get these from Art Supply Warehouse and they are online, artsupplywarehouse.com. If you live local to Orange County or LA, you can also go to their physical location in Westminster, California. I don't know if they have another location, but I know that one for sure. Um, and then Amazon also sells them. And like I said, I don't have my Amazon link. Oh no, I do. I do have it in here. Wow, look at me go. It does have my Amazon storefront. Look at that. So if you guys click on description, you can actually see my Amazon storefront. I don't care about making money through Amazon. I'm just trying to make a list for you guys to get to quickly. So don't worry if you don't buy it through my link. But I do, do highly suggest Art Supply Warehouse. Type in Holman Acrylic Gouache. And that is spelled, I'm gonna say it because a lot of people don't know how to spell it. H-O-L-B-E-I-N acryla or acryla a-c-r-y-l-a gouache 
a word now I know how to spell, but took me forever to learn how to spell it when I started using it. Um, the reason I'm telling you to type it in is because Art Supply Warehouse does, it doesn't just show up when I look up gouache. It comes up with other gouache that is actually wonderful, beautiful, more expensive. And the reason this is more expensive, it's more of a pure gouache. This one is, oh, I mean, I hate to say it's cheaper because I don't know why it is. This is like acrylic and watercolor get mixed together. So you can leave it more creamy consistency and thick without adding water, or you can add water and water it down to a watercolor. This one automatically is more like a watercolor. So that's the difference between these. I always go with this one if I can. Every now and then I'll try a new color and this looks completely different than my other opera pink completely this is more like a rose and the other one is like a fluorescent so just letting you guys know um oh good they opened a michael's near you so that you can get to things quicker i love that i love that i know what that feels like because when i was growing up my mom had to drive all the way two hours into the city uphill both ways in the snow but um <laughs> But yeah, she always had to go into the city to, to get us anything like this stuff. So um, be very thankful when you have a Michaels close to you guys or anything like that. I'm sorry, I took another sip and thought I'd get through it faster. That took a minute. Okay, you're going to see that I am a girl that constantly takes the lids off. I go directly from the tube to the page. If you want to bring a little... Um, palette over to mix colors you certainly can I'm gonna bring a plastic piece of paper that usually is an extra in my postcards I keep all of them it's just like the the backer card to um, keep them protected and safe so that's what I'll put down just in case I decide to mix but I don't think I'll be mixing much on this one I think I'm just gonna go right from the tube to the paper so when I was saying we're gonna start with like peaches for me I'm gonna go with shell pink shell pink and my brush is a deer foot brush and i just kind of go right from there you can tap off the excess on the side if you want to um but you'll see look at that it goes on so nice and i'm covering the marker but i also don't have to be super precise where i place things this is gonna speed up the process especially for those of you like me where it's like i want to do commissions for everyone but it takes so long to do all the commissions like perfect every single time. Um, what I wanna do is just kind of a bunch of simpler commissions and that way more people get them than just one person and I'm spending you know six months trying to paint the most beautiful canvas. This allows me to still give somebody an original and it doesn't ruin the, um, the look of it. Like it, it still has this really nice painted look to it. So let me show you guys. The dry brush kind of technique means there's no water. I haven't dipped it in the water yet. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But here is the effect we're starting to get. So you've got your marker and then you have that. And look at the dry brush creates this really cool little like soft line that you can kind of fade it out. You're right, no paint boogers. That's right, if you guys get a paint booger, you'll see what I do when I get to a paint booger. I don't have one yet, but soon I will in the little tubes here. Now you can paint the um, the body where the light would hit more and where there's starting to be a shadow. Guess what? The dark marker is already there. So I just use the least amount of paint in those areas as it fades out. And what that's doing is it's just kind of leaving that dark marker area. Now I can always go back with paint and add the shadows better, be more precise, but we're just trying to do a quick paint today. We're just gonna kind of get this done have some fun together. Top of the head would get a lot of light. All right, little shadow under where the um, crystals are starting to poke up here at the top of the forehead. So again, just trying to lightly let the brush fade out, not grab any more paint, and just kind of let those natural dark tones for the shadow stay that we did in marker. Bam. Did you see how quick I did that? It's already painted. It's already, it already makes me happy. It doesn't have to be perfect, just, just enough to get a little paint. And that way you guys, you can spend a Sunday just sitting there and painting really fast. Um, the marker just kind of coats it once and then we can move on from it, which is great. And we keep going. Next is coral red. This is usually my go-to for cheek colors. Again, you can mix it on the side. It doesn't have to go right from the tube. Oh, do we have a paint booger? I'm gonna I'm gonna milk this until I have to clear that paint booger out. Okay, it's all clogged. 
because I always leave my caps off, I'm really bad. You can mix it with uh, the color you are using for the, the tone of the fur that goes on the inside. I'm just gonna mix them together so that I get more coral red to that, and that way it makes it just a shade darker. This can also be, what, a shadow color? It's okay if you cover things because we're doing the background first. So we're not worried about um, the fur or anything like that. You can literally cover whatever you need. Um, we're gonna get that tone over here that I mixed. I'm gonna add a little shadow up here. And this dry brush, again, I haven't even touched the water. This dry brush technique is fantastic because it looks so textured and neat, and I'm all about texture. I want it to look like I painted it. I don't want it to be perfect. I want to see all of the lines and the process that I used. And then when I'm ready, this is still dry. There's no water on it. I can just thin out anything that I maybe did too much of a shadow or I'm just kind of blending them now that I have a little bit of that coral red paint. Okay, I'm just blending, blending, blending. So dry brush technique is more paint than water or just no water and just painting directly on it. Now maybe I want my cheeks to get a little darker so they even look more prominent. So I'm gonna get more of the coral red than the pink, than the shell pink. Oh, I think paint booger needs to be cleared out. Here's how we clear a paint booger. I always have cheapo, simple Dollar Tree kind of um, scissors laying around. Very carefully, don't stab in because sometimes you'll think you're in there and then it'll hit your hand. I've done that one. You just kind of put the end in and let the edge that is sharp go around. And what it does is it starts to work its way up. So you'll see it start to walk up towards the top. So see how it's starting to go up and then I'm just twisting the bottle and see it clears out a good chunk of it. We get rid of that paint booger. I just kind of pull gently and I'm going to go one more time. It's almost all cleared out, but let the edge of the scissors do it. Don't worry about because if you press in, it's going to push the whole clump into it. And there you go. There's more paint boogers in there because this is older paint, but um, we got the majority of it cleared out. I'll go in a little further, get some more, whoop, and there you go. Your paint boogers have been cleared out. Parents are probably great at getting rid of paint boogers. <laughs> okay, I'm going to wipe off this brush. It also helps to have several of the same sizes of the same brush because while one is maybe damp or you can't get like a dark color out, you can just move on to the next um, brush that is similar. So um, it always helps to save all your old brushes. They all do different textures, which is awesome. I'm gonna use a really dark coral red now. I didn't tone it down with any of that shell pink. I just went right in for it. And I'm gonna do one across the bridge of the nose between the eyes. Don't worry if it goes on the eyes. We're gonna paint those later. Okay, this is wherever you want your darkest tone to be. So while it's on there, I'm putting it right where I think a shadow would go. As the body turns, you probably are gonna see a shadow cast because it's going away from the light. If you feel like, oh my gosh, it's too much, then you can take a little bit of the first color you used. As long as they're in the same family, right? If they're pinks, if they're peaches, if they're a different tone of brown, if they're a different tone of yellow, purple, um, the more you mix them, the more colors you're gonna make. And on the belly button, I'm just gonna give a little rosy to the tummy. I'm going to give a little bit of a rose to the tummy there. Thank you, David, for tuning in live. We have 15 people watching live right now. Thank you so much, you guys. Can we get to 20? I don't know. Can it happen? Let's see. If you missed all of this, you can rewind at any time starting now. Start from the beginning. You can watch me do the whole process so you start to absorb what it is I'm doing, and then you can always come back and paint it. All right, now we're going to go to the teals. Okay, we've done all the fur. And I mean, guys, we're at, uh, and I mean, I'm giving instruction and talked at the beginning. I guess I can't see what the time is on this, but I mean, like, this is how quick you can get a painting done. So when people are like, you know, can you make this? Can you do that? I'm always like, hey, I should just start with my marker because now I don't have to put all that extra effort filling in everything, letting it dry, going, ah, oh, man, it shrunk. Like the paint shrinks as you go. It also lightens with acrylic wash as I go. So sometimes when I put it down, right now it's the darkest form because it's damp. But once it dries, it actually lightens to like a shade or two lighter. 
um, with acrylic wash. I can't say that for like um, acrylics. Acrylics, you usually you set it down, that's the color you're getting. So I'm just splashing and dry brushing. Remember how I said to dry brush, let the brush do the work. Um, you just kind of load it up a little bit, tap off any extra if you do, and the drier the brush is, like as if the paint's almost running out, you're gonna get really cool textures on watercolor paper. I can't say that about uh, plain paper because plain paper might not show up the same way. All right, now I can get down to like a little detail, tail, huh, detail, um, and now we got 16 people watching, look at that. I'm gonna take mint green for the hands. That way again, I'm not sticking with all the same color and I'm just using a little tiny brush. This is just a different brand, but I really liked the brush, so I kept it. Um, I think I like tested it out. This is probably some cheapo brand or something. No, Sterling Studio, maybe it's not that cheap. It's 20 over zero. I don't know, I don't know what a lot of this means, but I do know it has a nice kind of a rounded um, brush and this is called a round brush. Anytime it kind of comes to a point like that, it's a round brush. So now I'm just kind of using that round brush and it's the perfect width for the little fingers. So it's doing the work for me. I'm just kind of either pulling in and just barely touching the brush down or I'm laying it down and pressing. Press, press. So do you see how I do that? I just kind of press it down. And I'll show you here as well so you can see it without it being on the hands. What I'm doing is I'm like pulling and pressing, pull, press. These are also called teardrops and that way you can make a little hand really fast or you can go pull in and then just kind of round them out as you go. That's another way to do it. So just use your brushes. This is why having so many different brushes in your kit is gonna be helpful, but you don't need to break the bank. Um, Princeton brushes are usually the key. Um, but like I said, I buy different brushes too over time. Um, and then I'm gonna use the same green to kind of blend in. You can also change the brush up. I'm just kind of using that same brush while I have it on the brush um, and blending that hand in. So I went with mint green, I'm sorry, ice green, and then I switched to mint green. So ice green is the teal, mint green is that. And you know guys, skill level is how you get faster. And so if someone's like, but it only took you like 10 minutes, so can you charge me less? Uh, no, the reason I can go this fast is because I've worked on this for so long. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you should pay more if someone is faster because it means they've got their skill down and they've learned how to do this. They've learned how to master something. Now I'm using another deer foot, but this, this little pouncer kind of brush is, um, it is a little smaller. It's a little smaller. So we're just splashing a little bit of these kind of green tones in, making the squatch sprout even cuter with little soft pastels, adding a little to the boom boom. If I'm going too fast, what do I keep telling you guys? Pause, rewind, rewatch anytime. And in the future, if you know, you have a question and you've already watched it. You can ask in the comments. You guys can always DM me through Critterosity. Um, but the comments on a video is great because I can answer it and everybody else can see what the answer was. Um, also, if you want to join the live chat to talk, we're up to 18 and 19 people here on and off. Awesome. Um, thanks for joining us. You can use the live chat, but you have to be signed into your um, YouTube account for free. So there's that. All right, we're going to move to a purple. This one's gonna be lilac. We always wanna kinda go dark to light and then switch it up later. We have lilac and pale lilac. So I'm gonna take, um, again, a small deer foot brush. The other one is a large one. So, okay, this is my good like medium size. All right, we're going to start to blend. And something I told my DIY workshop people, they get all these special little tips from me, is, if you don't know what goes well together, yeah, you can look at one of those color wheels. Those were always really confusing for me. I didn't understand them. Let me give you a couple examples of what I tried to tell them. And the best way to do this is to go to a Target, a Walmart, whatever. L grab like a blanket and look at the colors they've put together. They have already had professionals know what colors go well together. Why can't I find something? I'm like looking for something right now that I've purchased. I don't really shop at stores. <laughs> I shop from small shops. I don't really shop from stores unless it's toys. But okay, I've got one, 
two. All right, I've got two things I'm going to show you guys just to give you an idea. These colors, this character looks good to you and it's flattering to the eye because why? They already know what colors go well together. So you can be like, okay, I want to use purple. What goes well with purple? Burgundy, um, like a fuchsia, a gold, a yellow, purple, and green tones. All very flattering. This wedding I was at over, let's say on Friday, somebody was using this gorgeous fuchsia dress and I asked her, did they tell you what their colors were when they got married? Because that fuchsia dress goes with the groom, <laughs> the groom's uh, beautiful, like, I don't even know, it was like a forest green. I'm trying to go from memory. It was so stunning. It was almost like this green, but it was even more like bright. And the, it's like, you just know when colors go together because it looks so nice together. So you can always go and look at products and see what colors go well together because whoever made this already knew color schemes. So you have color schemes surrounding you in your home, your plates, your bedding, uh, your bathroom items, if you bought like a soap dish with a matching towel, with a matching blah, 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 whatever it is, they're surrounding you because these companies already know it looks good. So I'm just telling you, there are colors everywhere that you can go, okay, I'm painting with blue. What colors go well with blue? Um, you can also look up um, like swatches of colors and say like uh, complementary colors to blue and then look at swatches that show up on Google. All right, I'm gonna show you right now. I know it's hard to see, but these have already dried. This is another reason why I love acrylic gouache. They've already dried. And this one is slightly still damp, but the color has lightened so much since I laid it down. So um, that is why I said in person, it's gonna look different than to you guys, but um, it's already bright. It's already ready to roll. Um, let's see. Uh, I think it would be a lot like living in Disney. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> to live it. I always say I wish I could live in Eva's brain for a day. It could be very scary. Hi, Erica. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry I missed that. Um, <laughs> everybody thought Greg and I got engaged. No, 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 no. You had to know Twilight to get the reference. <laughs> uh, but yes, I figured people would think that once I posted it. I was like, nope. If, you if you're not a Twihard, then you have no idea. You have no idea what we were filming. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to this misty green. This is literally called misty green. And this is the one that I'm going to coat the um, the eyeball, not the pupils, the eyeball. Um, the part that is what you guys would say is white. But if you actually look at somebody's eyes, they're usually um, a yellow ochre, like a really soft off-white, um, a beige. Um, I always find more yellow tones in people's eyes than anything, but um, you can do a light yellow, you could do a light green, a light blue. Um, I love this brand because they already have a misty green, which adds, adds the most beautiful, beautiful uh, low light to create a shadow. Is Greg a Twilight fan? No, if you watch my Instagram stories from today, I even put nobody had saw the, seen the movie. So I had to sit there and direct it and be like, okay, then he does this. Then like, that's why Greg looks so awkward because he's like, wait, do I stay there? And like, you guys don't know what we're talking about. But I'm like, hey, now she steps on his foot and now there's this. And yeah, we did a really quick reference to, to the old Twilights. Okay, um, up next, we're gonna blend a, um, a pink. This one is opera pink of this brand, which is still Holbin but this one is just Holbin gouache. There's no acrylla, it's just gouache. So it's more like a watercolor. So my my um, brush has to have a bit of water on it just to get it activated. And um, it's gonna add a really nice color. I did realize I forgot the purple on the tail, but that's okay, I'll go back. Now these are just darker tones like I did with the marker. I'm gonna go dark to light. So it's gonna get even lighter as it goes. Okay, and um, because I use brushes so often, um, my biggest challenge was going to birthday parties and realizing I left like my whole um, painting kit at home and I only had like three brushes or I'd have to run to the store and I'd have to find like any brushes I could at Walmart. This is before they had the craft section, guys. This was just Walmart with like the, like five options. Like here's crayons, here's some markers, here's uh, the cheapest paint brushes by Crayola. 
and I would have to learn to face paint with the worst brushes, but you know what? It taught me to be even better when I had good brushes. So a lot of times I have really good um, skill at, if I can toot my own horn here, I have really good skill at like controlling even the largest brush. Like if you gave me this and I had to paint the whole thing, I wouldn't like it, but I'd find a way to get it as close as possible. And I use the edges of the brush. Um, I use the brush flat edges, um, just barely getting into something. Line work probably wouldn't work with a brush like this, but um, yeah, so sometimes using cheaper stuff teaches you how much better it is to have good quality brushes in your kit. Um, <laughs> the, the extras chat is loaded with Twilight Talk. I have not seen any of that yet. Did you start your homework? Oh, you guys are talking to each other. Um, that color is beautiful. I absolutely love this color. Um, and I decided I'm going to finish off this color for the leaves. So I'm actually going to use that marker to speed up the process. So I'm going to grab this and don't forget to sip guys. We tend to get so, so stuck in what we're doing. You're overthinking it. You're like, Oh wait, it's still not good. No, let me go over it. The worst thing you can do is stay in one spot for too long. If you are sitting there still focusing on the eyes and you're like, I can't get it, it's not going to work. It will never get better. It'll only get muddier and yuckier. What you want to do is walk away from it. Let the paint dry if you are using paint. This is, again, why paint is forgiving. If I mess up with marker, I can't really fix it much. If I mess up with paint, guess what? If I let it dry and it's good paint, it'll cover right over it. So stop trying to fix something in the moment. Let it dry. Just know nobody can see it but you. You guys can see all my mistakes. If I make a mistake, I have to just tell myself it's going to get fixed. I'm not worried about it, you know? So stop worrying so much. It's just a painting. It's not the end of your life, okay? And move on to something else while it dries. Because that's the thing. If people get so stuck in one spot, it just tends to tear the paper, it gets all yucky, it starts to turn to brown tones. Don't do it, don't even do it, don't even think about it. Let it dry, let it dry, and then let it fly. Okay, so we're doing the same thing I did for the fur. I'm just coating this so anything that I don't hit with the paintbrush will just have a little bit of an undertone. All right, I like it like that. I like it like that. Okay. And we're almost done with filling those in. Then what I'm going to do is while things are drying, I'm going to start somewhere else. So right now, pretty much all my painting is dry. Plus I have my heater on today. So just really drying the paint really fast. Um, I love acrylic gouache because it is close to an acrylic, but it is forgiving in the sense that if I add more water, I can usually keep reactivating it. Regular acrylic paint is cheap and awesome and great and very thick and wonderful, but you can't reactivate it. Once it's dry, it's dry forever. If I want to reactivate that purple, I would just have to add a bunch of water and kind of try to reactivate. If you wait too long, it won't work so well. But um, just letting you guys know, that's usually what I do. I'm going to go back to my, my darker purple. These are all going to be pastels when it's done. I'm just kind of adding these in. And because I added the green, also try to limit how many colors you're using. It'll definitely help your painting when it's just like a limited palette. Um, since I did the green to separate from this, I'm gonna bring those pinks and purples back in, but opposite. The last thing I left off was this. I'm now gonna put that there. But I am gonna get lighter in the colors I'm using. So just hang tight. All right, so I don't care if I cover some of these little leaves, that's fine because I'm gonna go over it with paint but the majority of them are colored with some green, so we're good. I'm gonna go my darkest purple and kind of start to blend, and I'm also going to add some water to turn it more watercolor so that the, the um, crystal is more transparent, translucent, whatever word apply there. So we're gonna do that so it blends it and doesn't look as thick as this, because remember, a crystal is kind of more shiny, more see-through, some crystals, and I'm using my little um, paper towel as a blotter so that I can um, add the colors back to it. All right, now we're gonna do pink. And this is a new pink color and I wanna start to blend it. And I'm sorry, what I was trying to say was it makes it more see-through if you just hit it with the, um, 
napkin because it's going to soak up all of the color that's still really, really dark. So we want this to be really shimmery. I'm also going to add glitter to this. And if you're wondering, is this going to be an auction? Yes, it will be. Um, I plan, I wanted to do a design with me night last week, but then I realized there was just no time at all with everything I had to do, all the things I had to make and stuffs. So I'll be back with, um, my design with me night. If you're not on pop shop, please check out pop shop. It is an app pop shop live and you can shop with me live and it's the best place to do a live shopping experience. You can do it also on Instagram from time to time, but I really do way more pop shop shows than anything. So if you want to shop for me live and see what I've got, I do auctions. This will be an auction over here and this one will be an auction. So I've got two auctions coming up. All right, so I'm using that very, very bright pink to kind of do exactly what we did with the teal earlier. I just kind of add that little highlight over it, kind of dry brush it through over that dark pink. But see, this is exactly why I said let the dark pink um, go on the background because now when I kind of do a quick brush over it, you're going to see the dark pink where I don't um, put the rest of it. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't even read your comment when I said that. I just know it's going to be a question. I figured I'd answer it fast. All right, this is Pale Lilac. It is definitely a shade lower than the first lilac we used. So now this is going to start to look more pastel as we blend it in. I'm barely touching down on the character. Like I'm not pulling really hard. I'm just letting it glide across it very softly. Very soft because I don't want it to be one big clump. I want it to kind of have a soft blend. I'm not worried about the horns. The horns we're doing at the end because they're on top. Anything that's gonna be closer to us, I try to usually do those at the very end. All right, so all these colors are starting to come together. I'm gonna blend some of this purple in to uh, my little crystals up at the top. And I'm gonna use a little bit of shell pink because it is more of a soft color and a little bit of water just so again, can start to blend. And add a little highlight in there. And I'm gonna use my shell pink for a little bit in the tail, just little highlights here and there. All right, now we get to the nose. And the nose is like this fuchsia color. Okay, and I'm just putting a little bit of paint on my line brush. So this one's just for like line work. And I'm going to go over in the nose. Now you're probably thinking, well, why'd you even color it with marker? You went over it with the skin tone or the, you know, the inside fur tone. And the thing is, is that you just do it anyway. Even if it's gonna get covered, it's better to get the work done before you start painting and hope that like it's gonna help you than just like going with pure white color on the on the um, white paper because that white paper will start to show through. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Saying nice things to me. I appreciate that. Okay, and now we've got the smile, which I kind of want to use that same color and then I'll use coral. And I'm barely touching my brush down, guys. Like I am grazing it. It's doing all the work. If you press down really hard, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get a really thick line, and you don't want that unless you want that. You know what I'm saying? If that's what you're going for, great. But if you want it to look like a nice thin line, take your time. This is that paint was really thick there. Now it's really thin, and I'm dry brushing the belly button, so it's not super prominent. It's just kind of hidden in there. Okay, and then next, uh, I'm going to grab, actually, out of my kit of paint, I'm going to take a turquoise blue, turquoise blue. All right, this is my darkest color I'm going to want on my eyes. And I'm going to start to do my line work. So I'm using, again, my little, little tiny skinny brush. A little bit of water will kind of smooth things out. Too much water will just make it start to bleed everywhere. So you don't really want to do that. You want to keep it as thin as possible and barely touching the brush down. See how I'm holding my brush higher up? It's allowing my wrist to work. If I'm like right over it, 
It tends to be really controlled. If that's a spot you want to really be honing in on, you can totally do that. Um, but if you're just kind of filling it in, it's gonna get more if you just stay back. And again, this is a lot of practice. Um, also anchoring by using your pinky and laying it down or holding it up will help you out um, on your brushwork. Just some tips and tricks. Okay, so I'm gonna finish those eyes for now. So you see that it's darker where I put the marker and it's lighter where I didn't put the marker. And that's another example of why the marker is so helpful underneath. Okay, I'm gonna now start on my horns because you can see the glasses kind of overlap the horn and so that means that they're at the end. Take a sip of your drink. Mm -hmm. Shake your hands out, stretch. Get your wrists all ready to keep going. I want you guys to stand up for a second. I want you, if you're sitting on a couch, walk around a table. If you're sitting at a table, take one walk around the table because if you're staring at it, you're, you're just gonna see what you're seeing right now. If you stand back from your painting, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, yeah, I see a couple, and I don't really like how I did that. Then when you sit back down, you might start to notice it in a different light. So it always does help to get up, move around, walk away from it. Thank you so much for the three likes you guys did. If you haven't subscribed yet and you would like to subscribe and see when my channel has fun stuff on it, there will be more and more and more as the year goes on. I'm starting to get my, my groove back, starting to get my time back, which is awesome. Okay, um, now we're gonna do the horns. I'm gonna show you another brush. This is a really cool brush too. This one is a flat shader and it is something Simmons, I think, acrylic. I don't know, sometimes I just end up with brushes I find at yard sales. Um, but I do like flat brushes as well. They're really great coverage. And I'm gonna go to Jean Brilliant. Jean Brilliant is kind of like a peachy tone and you're probably like, but Eva, you picked a really brown color for the marker. Yes, I did, because again, that brown marker will maybe show through as I dry brush. I might even go to more of a brown tone later. I don't know, maybe I'll use the marker over the paint when it's dry, who knows? You just kind of have to mess around and change it up as you go. Okay, we got those paint boogers out, ready to paint. If you are catching this later and you wanna be a part of the sip and paint, all you have to do is rewatch it at a later date, or you can even hit the rewind button and start from the beginning, even if I'm live. You guys can rewatch. So see how that brown tone is kind of helping come through, just like when we added that really dark tone in the back. So now I'm just kind of dry brushing and not doing like a super like intricate, intricate job. I just want to kind of let the dark brown show through and the Jean Brilliant is more like a highlight. It's bringing it a little softer. I'm almost in need of a new small shop candle because my other candle's almost gone. I love my candles. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. Zoom me out, zoom me out, if I can. There we go, I think that's far out as I can zoom. A zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay, and now I'm gonna go to a Naples yellow. And Naples yellow will add a nice little glow on top of those horns. And I'm using, again, my little um, shader brush. I have a chisel brush. And left to right now, because I want to try to match them. And since I'm a righty, I want to do my left first. And then I can try to match it on my right. If I do my right first, I don't really see it on my... It's hard to tell. Like, I can't really see on that side. So again, it needs a little more. You can always let it dry, but I try to get like my highlights and stuff blended before the other color underneath it is too light. Um, you usually like to add, to add the thumbs up at the end because the chat blocks, the chat blocks the something. I, I'm sorry, it's because where they put the heart. I can't see what you wrote. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you didn't want to use a black marker. No, cause black will bleed. 
like so when you when we traced with black and i know you jumped in a little bit late there david um if we colored this all in black or something it's great if you want to like do a mickey mouse hat and you want it all black that's fantastic because you're mostly using black but if i did black and then tried to use a color it'll pull it even if it's a permanent marker it still tends to um smear into the picture so I avoid, I avoid, I avoid if I can. I, I always tell people I avoid black and only use it in the very necessary parts of the painting. All right, I'm using my shell pink. So a lot of people would grab white right now, which I, I do from time to time. I'm using shell pink because I can blend it in. And that way I didn't have to go grab white and it's still kind of a fun color to add a highlight. So you would think more yellows, more beige, more white, but sometimes you can change it up and use um, a color that you wouldn't expect. All right, I'm gonna add a little highlight to the nose with shell pink again. Boop, a little highlight. We're gonna add some little cheekies uh, shine right there. And I will still add white to it. It's just that for now, it's kind of fun to do this. Um, I'm using my shell pink and just kind of adding highlights in places. I'd like to see a little bit more light. All right, I can add a little bit of water to blend it, especially if the paint underneath it is dry, it's creating kind of a block for it, which is nice. Okay, just a little bit of a highlight over the nose, a little bit of water to blend. And I can even blend it into the background and just add like almost like a soft transparent over the color to soften the color of that rouge that was over the nose. And you can always bring things back into the painting if you don't like what you did. See, you can make mistakes and then just fix them up later. So now I can see I would like my the little cheeks to be even bigger and I'm just using my deer foot brush to kind of blend. That's a little too uh, on the nose. So basically I'm gonna come back. If it's too obvious, I usually blend. I want it to just be like a soft, soft tone. So yeah, you can always go back and fix things up that you don't like, that you didn't see before. Uh, navy blue, yeah, it depends. It depends on what colors you're planning on doing. Like navy blue would have been okay in this situation, um, but uh, marker, marker, not necessarily paint. Um, black marker tends to bleed as well, whereas if it was a navy blue uh, marker, not so much. If you use reds and pinks, they bleed through acrylic paint, everything. They basically, um, yeah, they basically mess up the paint when you're doing it. It's, it's really fascinating why it is, but it's something with the pigment. All right, now I'm using just a basic acrylic white, very basic acrylic white, something you can buy at the store. That is the only exception for me. I don't even buy black acrylic. I use black acrylic wash. Um, I like white acrylic because it really covers and adds a very solid, solid, solid tone, which is awesome. And I'm just using acrylic white to kind of go into that misty blue and I wanna kind of blend it. So I'm just kind of pulling upward and letting it blend over the top. I don't want the misty green to go away. I wanna still see that shadow, but at the very bottom, I'm really adding the white. That's where the light is mostly hitting underneath at the bottom of the eye. Okay, then I'm gonna add a little bit to the nose. Okay, the cheeks I like more of the soft uh, shell pink as the highlight. So that's more the color I want for that. You can add a little shell pink over the nose for a little highlight. Okay, then we've got, um, let's see here. And I can always cover over the white too. Uh, my horns, I'm gonna add a little bit of some line work here to add a little bit of a shine, just very little following the curve of the horn so that it looks natural as opposed to just a straight white line. Just kind of following that. Okay, white's gonna start to make it pop. We're gonna go over the crystals. Okay, you can add some little highlights here and there, a couple dots. And don't worry, we'll get to the glasses. The glasses will be last if you chose to do those. Um, I just kind of add dots and lines in different places. And because it's a crystal, I'm okay with some transparency of seeing the white in the background. 
That's fine with me. I'm going to cover up some of these lines that are black with the acrylic. All right, and just how much you want to add is up to you. Because again, I'm going to add glitter to my little crystals. Okay, now I'm going to add my line work to the horns. And since I think I don't have my brown down here, I think what I'm going to do is use marker to show you guys exactly what that would look like in case you'd be like, oh no, I don't have a certain color. As long as you have markers around, you're usually good. Um, I just have to find a marker. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so starting with my left side, making sure it's all dry. Eee, is that dry? Or is that from the nose one? That's from the nose one. See, marker will go to a nice soft fade and that's kind of what I like. I don't want it to be super obvious. If it's not dark enough, you can go to a darker brown. Um, while I have it, I'm actually gonna add brown to the bottom of this. And because of the um, pigment in the paint, and the resistance it kind of has because it's a paint, it's kind of blocking all the color to get saturated. It's kind of cool to shade with it too. So there's that. Got that going. And now I'm gonna add to the eyes a bit more. So I'm gonna take my really, really light blue. I'm just gonna add a little highlight in the eyes. I think I had too much water on that one. Let me get a different brush. I feel like that brush is too skinny. I'll get a deer foot brush. Okay, I'm gonna tap some of this off on the edge here. And I'm just gonna kinda let it blend. But I wanna keep the darkest blue at the top. So again, less water, just a little bit of water to get it to blend and fade. And if there's anywhere else while you're doing that, you can start to shade things now. Highlights, lowlights. Don't worry about line work, I'm gonna get to that towards the end. Can always pounce too instead of dragging. Okay, now I'm gonna add some of this into the leaves, but I haven't done line work yet, so I can always bring the lines back. And we're just adding a little bit over there, hiding some of the darkest, but leaving some dark because it is in the background. I'm gonna go to a smaller brush and start to add details. Um, so I'm still obsessed with ginger and snow buns, but these crystal squatches have taken my mind off of them for now. <laughs> I love that. I am so glad. I like different seasons. I don't like to get burned out and I don't like people feeling like they can get my stuff all the time um, of certain characters because that would just be people getting bored. And if I make you wait for different seasons for different things to come out, it makes you fall back in love with them, makes you enjoy them and appreciate them more. So we didn't do a ton of clovies this year. Uh, there weren't a ton of clovey characters. There weren't a ton of crystals or squatch sprouts because these are kind of taking a little bit of that place this year. Similar, but not the same. Um, yeah, so I try to change it up so that you guys enjoy when I make one that is kind of a new, a new character. And then one year when I don't have enough ideas or something, I will maybe go back and work on some more of a character you guys know and love. But yeah, constantly keeping myself excited to make the next new thing. And also, I get excited to do it again when the year comes around instead of getting burned out on it. So yeah, if I was doing snow buns all year, I'd be like, I don't even want to do them for the holidays. And I learned that about myself um, much, much too late. I wish I had known what it was I was liking and not liking earlier so that I could stop doing those things and bring them back at a time I wanted to do them. Um, but yeah. 
and because of Cinco de Mayo and doing um, kind of a Coco themed show on May the 4th and also May the 4th uh, being Star Wars, I plan on doing some more things in that realm for an upcoming show. So there's that. There's just so much to be discovered in my little worlds that I, it's like I want to keep things sacred and fun. One squatch, squatchies on merch. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so remember those dark colors we kind of had at the beginning um, that are underneath those colors? Now we're going to start to bring them back for some line work. And instead of making obvious line work, like tracing everything, we can still do that. But now we're just going to give like a hint to it. So we're just going to kind of add some shadows around here and there, maybe some swirls or some little lines, but I don't want to do too much line work. I'd rather it just be a nod to line work and that's about it. So instead of adding it every single corner, I'm going to kind of add fun little details. Now, Eva, how do you do all these like fun swirls and things? It's called practice. It's called face painting. Taught me a lot of things for years. I will preach face painting to people who are artists or want to be artists or make extra income all the time. But pressure and trying to practice swirls and lightening your pressure and then pressing and then lightening again is going to help you out a lot when you're doing some line work. So line thickness is very, very, very important when doing artwork. Um, things get very stagnant and boring when it's the same thickness, when it's the same color scheme, when it's, it's like you have to change things up. So practice pressing and lifting your brush as many times as you possibly can. Um, so that you start to learn how much pressure to put on the brush um, when you're working. Right now, I'm just kind of guessing. I don't know. I just, I don't really know what I want. If I mess up, what did I say? Everything is extremely forgiving with um, paint. You can always go back and add highlights or lowlights. If I don't like what I'm doing right now, I can come back with white. I'm just trying to hide as much of the black pen marks as possible, kind of fix some things that maybe went outside the lines and I want to kind of get them back a bit. Um, you can use this as fur lines, but I want to wait to do the glasses until this is dried and like I have everything where I want it because we don't want to bring in these colors and smear them. So I'm going to add a couple little fun swirls here and there. Okay, even though it's purple, I might want to start to bring my purples in over this color. So I'm just kind of grabbing some things here and there. Maybe I want to add a little bit of a shadow in between these for my crystals. Yeah, it's a lot of just practice and guessing. You know, if you don't like something, then just don't do it again. But each thing is a learning lesson. Um, I don't always get it right the first time. I might not like how dark something is. I'll come back with water and kind of lighten it up like this and then blend that. So there's still a dark to it. It's just that I'm softening that tone I just laid down. I put it on really thick and now I'm thinning out the paint and blending, but we want more of the shadow in at the bottom of our crystals, even though they're kind of sheer and see-through. I put it down dark and then I add light, like water to lighten. So there's still water on my brush. Maybe, remember when I told you you could reactivate? Watch this. Just a little bit of water reactivates this and turns it into a watercolor. But when it's dry and you've let it dry, it dries for a long time. So you can always go back to the line work now and reactivate those pink tones. Okay, this is way too pink. So what am I gonna do? Reactivate and start to blend it so it looks more like a crystal is just kind of glowing with color. You can always fix it. If you're using the right tools, if you're using acrylic, good luck. It's it's not going to move. You can see all my white is not reactivating. The white is more um, going to just stay there and then I'll just touch up the white again. Okay. 
<laughs> I would love for somebody to pick up my characters and make an animated thing. I wouldn't want it to be an actual animation studio because they tend to keep everything as theirs. I've watched a lot of people I know have their stuff and like it was big for a minute and then it's gone and they like don't own the rights to it. So I always tell people it'd have to be like an independent company that would be like, you own all the rights. We own nothing. We just want to make cartoons of it and get paid for the cartoons. I'm like, okay, bring it on. But I, these are my babies. Nobody steals my babies. These are all for me. All right, I'm water. Now here's the other thing. You can water down acrylic. Did you guys know that? You can water it down. So same thing. It's treated more like a transparent over. This is how we're gonna be doing the glasses as well. So now I'm blending that new white I just put down before it dries. See, that's dry, I can't blend it. But what I can do is get a little bit of water after I put the paint down and kind of blend it in so it softens those colors underneath. Okay, and then when I want it to really stand out, I just go right into the paint and boom. There we go. Nice and peaceful, guys. Nice and quiet. <laughs> Way too much pink. There's no such thing. Um, now I'm going to take my, my light purple and I'm going to kind of soften the lines I just did earlier. Okay, so you can go back and forth. You can add more, take away, add, take away, add, whatever you want to do. Okay, now I'm gonna take that really dark blue and start to add some line work, but I'm gonna mix my ice green and this blue because I think it's way too blue. Way, way, way too blue. So I'm gonna take some of that and I'm gonna take some, you take that, take that, okay. So top that, top that. Anyone know what 80s movie that's from? Maria and I laugh every time we hear it. Okay, so see how I'm blending the two together that made all of this? Um, look at that. It's getting rid of some of that marker, which is fine. The marker was just down to kind of help guide us. And now I'm going to add this nice soft blue tone, which is going to soften it up, but it's still darker than the first color, the ice cream, because we mixed in the darker tone and that's going to create a shadow. So now we can add a little bit of a shadowy blue and then anywhere we want highlights, we'll go with that light green or the really light blue as well. If you want it to be even darker, just add more of the shade you want a bit darker. And this way, again, you're not using black as an outline. You're using a color that's in the same family as the one you were using. And that way you don't have to have a black outline and it will soften it tremendously. Tremendously. Yes. So let's say I want to do my little leaves now and I want to add little lines. Okay, just try to keep in mind the things I told you. Um, lines that match up too close together is gonna be a little confusing. So try to keep your lines kind of um, going at an angle. So instead of the foot matching up with this line, we're kind of having them meet in a different spot. Okay, I'm using that blue, kind of dry brushing it too, even with like the water I have on it, it's cool, but then as it starts to run out, that's fine by me. I'm gonna give him a little footy where he'll have a lighter color in his foot. So see, you can also mix your colors and just use the color you were already using and then add a, a tone a little bit darker than that. And that will also help bring out your highlights as well. If I was as good as make at makeup as I am with paints or even cutting hair as good as I am with paints and coloring hair and stuff like that, life would be great. I just don't know how to do any of those skills. So yay to all of those people that can actually do makeup and everything. Even as a face painter, like you must be great at makeup. I'm like, I'm terrible at makeup. I'm great at painting a cute character on someone's cheek. Sure. Doesn't make me good at makeup. <laughs> I can give somebody a great wing tip on their eyes on a painting, but I cannot do that for myself. All right, so now I'm just going back and blending and picking things I like. I'm gonna use my really light my mint green. What are you drawing? Oh, you're asking somebody else? Um, let's see. 
Oh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, I plan on, this is another reason I wanna do sip and paints is so that it forces me to sit down and work on something I want to and make art. So that's why these little um, workshops are really nice for me too, is I gotta pick things I like and make them into something special. All right, so now we're going back and adding highlights, basically, wherever I need a highlight. I'm gonna use my lightest colors in that family or close to and start to add things back. There we go. And if it's too much, what do we do? We add our other colors back into it. I love the sound of that candle. It reminds me of fire. Okay, and a few little highlights where it's really dark. Okay, and now I'm gonna add my little glasses in, and that way I know that most of this is dry. Oh, Kirk. Oh, hi, Kirk. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, Kirk, if you are on Instagram, which I think you are, if you're on Instagram, Kirk, and you tag me as watching Critterosity, this is what I was working on, I would love to share what you were working on. So if anyone has that, if this is days later and you're like, I'm going to watch it, but I want to work on my own character, or you want to show me how yours turned out, I would love to see it. If you would, wouldn't mind me sharing it with my supporters, um, tag me in a um, story, but just make sure you're explaining why because other people will start to just tag me and stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 it's gotta be on topic here. If you are watching mine and making your own stuff, that's fine. If it's a spin on the character I'm teaching, great. But giving me a little shout out to your people helps me the other way. So thank you so much. All right, now it was an accident. Here's a happy accident. A little bit of blue happened to get on my brush and I ain't mad at it, okay? Let me tell you. So I have watered down acrylic white, okay? Watered down acrylic white and a little bit of blue got on the brush, which I don't care. It's awesome. It makes it have a nice little shade. And I add this soft, soft, soft transparent white. Even if you wanna mix it on the corner, you grab the acrylic white you get some down. If it's too white, look what's, it's going to start to like show up too much. We don't want that. Well, I mean, I don't want that. You can want whatever you like. Okay. But for me, I don't want it to be an obvious white, just a little hint of white. And then I kind of come back and do a little bit, a little bit more white because I'm going to add the shine is going to be a pure white like up there. So there's that. Yeah. Maddie's fantastic. <laughs> Um, she is pure talent, pure talent. Absolutely agree with you 1 million percent. I think that she could run the world. Maddie could learn every single skill. She's like learning science and is like, I don't really know science, but I'm learning all these things and going to teach all the kids. I'm like, I couldn't even retain it if you tried to teach me. It wouldn't work. All right. Now I'm going to do the lash line and let me show you guys, you have to get comfortable and try to start somewhere where if you pull, you continue the line. If you're doing little bits at a time, it's gonna start to look kind of bumpy. Um, another thing is like, which way are you gonna go? Is it easier to pull it? Is it easier to pull down, go upward? So the more water, the better, but you don't want your water going above the brush. That means water is going to run down and as you're making those nice lines, guess what's going to happen? A big old gush of water will come down and it's going to go on there and it's not going to look good. So I am barely touching my brush in the water, just on the bristles. I am getting black on the paintbrush and I'm going to just set some aside, kind of give a couple pulls, make sure no water is like flowing crazy, load my brush by rolling it back and forth, getting my hand position ready. I'm even going to move this because I don't trust myself. Okay. Getting my hand position ready and then I'm going for it soft pressing down and then lifting on the brush. And that's because we talked about line weights, okay? If you go too thick all the way, it's gonna look like one chunky line. You wanna try different lines, okay? Um, this is why Sharpies are not our friends. Uh, we like brush tip pens when we're doing art because 
a Sharpie is just gonna give one big th fat thick line and there will be no cool like line work to it. And it's so funny because I did not understand what I was looking at whenever I would see something and I'm like, why is it so appealing to me? Why do I like it so much? It's because of line weights and the way people change up how thick the lines are, how skinny the lines are. If you're gonna do a little winged um, wing tip on her, you know, a little thick line to a little point. Think about people that do those beautiful cat eye um, eyeliners. Like it's it's thick to thin. It looks really pretty. If it's one thickness, it's gonna kind of lose the appeal. Your mermaid character from your children's book, trying to make some stickers. Yes, do it, do it. All right, now, just cause it's down, doesn't mean you have to get it right the first time. It's better to do a thin, thin, thin line and keep thickening it up than to do one thick line and then you have to take other colors to try to soften it. So um, yeah, so that's the best way to go about it for me, for me. And then I just take a little bit of black at the top here. Oop, she almost messed up, she almost did it. All right, I'm gonna take black and start to just use black and fade it into the blue, just to give it even more of a shadow cast. If you don't like doing that, don't do it, but I feel like it makes it a little bit more, a little bit more believable as the shadow if there's a bit of black. And then what I'm gonna do is soften that black tone Okay, so it's not just one sharp line here. I'm gonna take only water on my brush. So I wanna get off any paint. Okay, you can always test it on a piece of paper and see. There's a little bit of water and I'm gonna blend it down. Just a little bit. I don't wanna lose that blue. I'm gonna keep the blue there. But I'm just gonna kinda blend it so it's not just like one harsh black line. There we go. So we've added a nice little shade, a little shadow. Okay, all right, up next, um, and I could sit here forever and keep adding all the details for the line work. I'm gonna do a little bit for the body and then I'm gonna pick a color for the glasses on the outline and I'll pretty much just wrap mine up. But see, you can go back with like coral red and because we did shell pink as the main color over our marker, um, now we can use coral red as a shadow. This is just a white piece of the acrylic. There we go. I'm like, <laughs> um, coral red over the nose. You can start to shape things with it because it looks like a shadow color. So we're just adding a little bit of this coral red to kind of underline the mouth. We can go back over the mouth again. We got a little chin maybe. We've got um, a little bit on the eyes. Remember that line we drew? And I said, I don't really need to see the line of the character. I more so just need to add it at the end. There we go. So I didn't have to draw it with my marker. Kind of add a little thick line there. A um, little shadow under the nose. Shadow under the glasses that are going to be sitting there. Okay, little glasses have like a little bridge. Um, maybe there's a little shadow where the fur starts to go over the thinner fur. Thinner fur. Thinner fur. Um, maybe there's a little shadow under this little widow's peak curl. A little shadow under where the leaves are popping up. A little shadow on the side of the head. So see, we haven't used black really at all except for the eyes. So don't ever feel like you can only outline it in one color. You can outline in a lot of different colors. All right, now I'm going to take, um, I'm going to use that blue that the eyes are. I think it'll be a nice a nice little color for it. Again, trying not to use too many colors. I'm trying to stick it with like a very simple palette of like maybe four colors and then different highlights and lowlights of those. Thank you so much, Sarah. Hi, Adira. Oh my gosh, adorable. I'm so late, but glad I got to see some of it. Thank you so much. And this will be saved so you guys can certainly come back and rewatch. All right, so we're going to do what I told you guys with the glasses or with the eyes. Right, load up our brush, make sure the water is not running down the brush because if it is, the thing you can do if you start to notice that is just touch your little napkin to there and leave the brush out. And that way, all that extra water that's like running down, you know, it happens to me all the time. I think that I only dipped my brush in the water so far and I'll start to see a big dew drop and I'm like, no, 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 you stay right there. All right, so now if you're an artist in the chat, and you're able to write your name, 
Will you please give us your Instagram right now in the chat because it might go away after. So I wanna make sure people know that you're also an artist and whether you're doing it full time or you just have an art account, leave it up to them to choose if they want to give you a follow or not. Again, there is no obligation with Eva. No judgment, no obligation. That's how I roll. So um, I treat people the way I want to be treated and I never want someone to force follow me. So if it gets you a couple new eyeballs, fantastic. You'll be able to see so much more with more eyeballs. Just kidding. <laughs> stupid. Okay. Um, stupid jokes by Eva. All right. And there's your opportunity. Not everybody does a live and says, hey, if you're also a small shop or an artist, leave your information. Uh, so you should definitely take that as a sign to leave the information. Okay, I'm gonna need more blue. And then I'm gonna use golds and glitters to finish mine up. Because you guys know when I do sip and paint, I go all out. Okay, I'm starting to see a lot of water come down, but actually I kind of want to use it for this one because this is a long brush stroke. Okay, and my glasses are never shaped perfect. One always looks a little off than the other, but hey, I try my best, and I think the idea of it being there is all that matters. Being perfectly on the shape and trying to match them exact is really tough to do. So if that's you right now and you're like, I can't get it, don't stress out. And if you go too thick, it's gonna start to mess with it, and then you won't be able to come back unless you use a bunch of paint to cover it. So. Be careful with how thick you go with the lines. All right, now I'm making mine just a little thicker, a little thicker, and then I'll use my pink to go over the nose again. Okay, so we've left the glasses. It's almost like the little baby's like, these are my mommy's glasses. I wear them all the time. <laughs> and she's like, Greta, are you wearing mommy's glasses? No. You're wearing you are it's like when i'd steal my mom's shoes and her purses from her closet <laughs> i don't want you wearing those that's for when mommy goes out but i want to wear them and now you can't even get me into like nice clothes like ew why would anyone wear that <laughs> by choice <laughs> unless it's an event i have to uh-uh she wants to be comfy See, it's starting to get a little thicker, so I have to be very careful with my next choices here. All right, we need to round this out because I made it too boxy. And I'll use white to cover up any mistakes. Okay, and now that means I have to kind of match it on the right. Again, we'll never be perfect. Don't aim for getting it perfectly symmetrical. I'm just trying to get it close enough. It looks somewhat better. There we go. I'm okay with that. And I think I just need to mash this little part up right here. Just needs a little bit, a little bit more. Okay. I'm happy. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, let's see. Um... There you go, Kirk Illustration. I was like, I know Kirk Illustration. I know, I know this, but you know, I had to say. Eva should do a make a sticker with me video of this cute character. Thank you so much. Hey, Kirk, did you miss my tutorial day the other day? I have it saved. It's, I, I make a big character sticker. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Let's see. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my fun, fun, fun stuff. This is glitter, gold, shimmer. This is how we start to bring it to life. Okay, so let's talk about these really quick. Um, I always forget the names of these. These are Art Supply Warehouse. If you look up metallics or iridescent, I think you'll find these. They have a black backer card and it's like written in cursive, the company, but I always take them off the black ba backer card. It's not because I don't want to tell you guys, I genuinely just forget, but it is art supply warehouse that I get those. And then I use all different glitters. These are from Walmart. I've got glitters from face painting. I've got Stampendous. 
it doesn't matter, um, but I like pixie dust kind of glitter because it always looks the best. I'm going to use a uh, Tacky Glue by Aline's Tacky Glue, always. I've been a Aline's Tacky Glue girl since the late 90s, okay? Um, we have another type of metallic, which I do suggest if you ever use like Pearl X, anything that's a loose powder to wear a mask or sit really far away, but a mask is definitely key. Um, and then we have, uh, this one is Folk Art Design Cream. Um, they were out of my other gold that I really, really like by Folk Art, um, but this is also Folk Art, and I find that their golds are the best of the best of the best of the best. I don't like this one as much because it's more like um, a, a stencil paint um, for your home, like on the walls, and the other one was more of a liquid so just letting you guys know, um, that's what it is. That's what it is. Thank you so much for saying you're going to check it out. I appreciate you. Okay, so we're going to start with, um, we're going to start with glitter because when you think about it, once glitter, glitter's on the glue, it sticks. If I do gold and then I do the glitter and I go to shake it off and the gold isn't dry, it will stick to the gold as well. So we're going to start with actually shimmer 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 i'm not going to use the loose one i'm going to use the um pressed iridescent and this just adds a nice little sheer to the glasses it kind of adds like a green tone but once you twist and turn the the painting you see like what it was for oh and i totally forgot my white highlights so we'll come back with white highlight as well okay and then i'm going to add some of this sheer now the thing is again it does add kind of a greenish tone any of these metallics you use when you're when you can't see what the sheer is doing you have to kind of pick it up and move the canvas i will show you guys what i'm talking about i'm going to use a little bit of this on the horns right over the white and i'm going to leave it at that so here we go this is what it does let's see if i can get capture the light and show you guys there you go so you see the iridescent in the glasses and on the crystals, that's what those do. And it's really fun. They make a ton of different like red tones, blues, etc. But when it's flat, it just kind of looks green. So you kind of have to mess with it to kind of start to see it go back. I'm sorry, I'm trying to watch the video too to see where you guys can see it. But anyway, the more you out of that, the, great, the greater it is. Um, I have a set gold to wear. It's not super damp, it dries really fast. So you have to load it on your brush with water and then work kind of quick as you go. Um, this is better if you're gonna do glitter after because this dries really, really, really fast. Um, liquid gold takes a little bit longer to dry, but not very long. It's like maybe a minute or two. So if you're trying to move on with a project fast and you need gold, this is a great one, but it does depend on what you're painting on. It doesn't always work on like things that have a coating on it. I don't use this gold on, um, on my stretch canvases because that's a special coating that they put on it so it kind of rejects it and i have to use my liquid gold for that liquid gold i always think of the commercials right you guys know what i'm talking about so here's some of that i'm gonna go back to my white and add the highlights right now uh let's see thank you so much you guys thank you thank you thank you all right using my round brush my really small round brush I just do a dot on the eyes on its angle, like at an angle. So I lay it down, okay? I lay it down and I try to get them at the exact same angle. Do it once and once if you need to try to add a little more. What happens with acrylic is it starts to pick up on the brush and then I'm starting to see the painting underneath. So just very soft, don't push down really hard. All right, we are gonna do more white at the bottom of the eyes to bring more highlight, touch up anything that maybe you messed up. We're gonna do a little bit of white up in the shadowed area. So that's gonna pick up a little glare as if the light is bouncing off of it. So we do a little glare of this, a little glare of that. Um, we're gonna add some more highlights that are just solid. Okay, so a solid color. And I know I didn't really do much with the eyebrow on this one. I figured the glasses were gonna kinda cover it with the sheer. So I just went ahead and kinda left them. But this is why I said the more translucent, the better, because that one line for the glasses looks really um, bold as opposed to transparent, but it's fine. Not mad at it at all. At all. All 
All right, keep thinking I'm getting the paint and then I'm not. And sometimes when I add like a line here, it does look like they're angry. You guys remember when your teachers would stand over the projector and they'd be wearing glasses and it would project that like angry look? That's what it always reminds me of. And I'm like, oh no, I didn't want that. So I'll kind of start to curve mine around. And if it's too much, catch it early because then you can blend again and just make it more transparent. So you can water down acrylic. Don't feel like you're stuck with it. You can always water it down and like one before it dries, before it dries. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this transparent white to, um, to the eyes as well, because we want it to kind of look like the glasses are over the eyes. So just a little bit, nothing crazy. And if it's too much, what do we do? We take our napkin very carefully if you've already got paint on it and we just tap, a tap, a tap, a tupu. And you can always add things back to it. See, I'm using a lot of water right now. Oh, see what happened? Don't worry, because I don't stress. Do you stress? I don't, oh, she just went crazy there at the end. I do not stress out. You can grab water, scoop, and bring it back. What happened was it was too much water. It reactivated all of my colors underneath. So I just have to kind of scoop around, keep cleaning off my brush. Don't do too much, just enough to clean it up. Okay, I'm just almost like an eraser. This is why I love showing you guys live how I fix something, because it happens all the time. You'd think I'd learn by now, but I don't. Okay, so we're just scooping, and then I can always add the paint back over it. So watch this, ready? Don't stress. The more stressed you are, the more stressed I get. Here we go, ready? I'm just gonna touch it up, and we can always come back with that white tomorrow when it's lighter, dry. But anywhere you want to fix right now, this is a great time to do it. You can also add that color back so that it's transparent over the eyes, but not in every single spot. So you still see it. But we also don't want it to look like there is no, like the glasses just all of a sudden disappear on the character. All right. In my chat, do we add lashes or leave it like this? Majority vote wins. You guys get 30 seconds to leave the comment. Because my white blob was still really damp, I think it really made it change. All right, somebody put lashes. All fixable if you have the time and the patience. Oh, we got one, two, three for lashes. We're gonna go with lashes because I know about how many people are in the chat. So we got a couple ways. I sometimes will flick the brush, but here I'm just gonna pull. I'm gonna do little ones, little tinies. And then that way I can pull outward here. Okay, so don't be afraid to move your canvas around. Does it make you a worse artist? And the reason that I say those things is because that's the stuff I believed when I first started. I'm like, a regular artist never messes up. A rig, because we're not all Bob Ross, okay? That homeboy was amazing. <laughs> he seemed to have a way to just get everything to be perfect and knew his skill, right? So don't be afraid to, you know, twist and turn the canvas. Using reference photos does not make you a bad artist. It means you don't know how to draw every single thing. You can reference things, just don't steal things. That's like the worst. Reference means it's just a guide. It's just gonna help you out a bit, all right? So all the things people didn't tell me that I thought I really truly believed, like, oh my gosh, if I don't know how to draw something from my brain, I'm a terrible artist. No, that just makes you a human. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit of a dark coral red around this because I know tomorrow I'm gonna add more um, of a sheer, maybe even a little bit later when it dries. Um, I'm gonna fix up the nose for just a second. Is my battery dying? Um, 
I haven't gotten a low battery thing. Does it look weird? Is something happening? Did it glitch? I have it plugged in, so it shouldn't be. But when I'm live, unfortunately, the app doesn't show me my battery life, so I can't even see it. But we're just about done here. All right, so if you guys um, want to add glitter or anything like that, um, it makes this little character even cuter, I think. There we go. See how I added that blob? I totally forgot that that still wasn't dry when I was doing all my work. So see, quick fixes, everybody, quick fixes. And adding a little bit more here. So how much you add and take away is up to you. Boop, boop, boop. And this is why I told you to put music in the background because Eva zones out for a minute. And she starts to just have fun, just being free, drawing, painting. Okay, and the horns, that was the other thing I forgot. Now, I didn't bring down, like I said, like a brown, so I'm just going to kind of wing it here. Let's see. Hi, cutesy lots. Oh, I hope church was fun for you. The spinning circle keeps popping up. Weird. Do you guys see that as well? Nothing's happening on mine. It's probably just my Wi-Fi. Like the loading is not doing well. Anybody else having trouble and seeing a little spinning circle? Sorry about that. Glad it didn't work until or didn't start happening till later. Almost done with the painting. I'm also not speaking. <laughs> I'm also not saying much. So if you guys like don't hear me, it's not me not talking. I mean, it's me not talking. <laughs> no spinning circle here. Weird. Sorry, Lisa. Maybe close it out and come back. All right. So now we're going to add some glitter to the glasses. Okay. I'm going to add some glitter over here. We're going to add some glitter up at the top. Just ideas of glitter. I don't like to like put so much glitter you can't see it. That doesn't make me happy. I just like little hints of it. All right, and we're gonna grab my little glitters. Okay, and this is kind of a mixture of chunky pixie glitter and then really thin pixie glitter. Now I know there's things it's probably sticking to, but mostly in the glasses, which is totally fine with me. If it sticks to her eyes or anything, it just looks more like the glasses. Okay, I'm gonna blow up my candle. That way I don't light my paper on fire here. All right, you can even add backgrounds, do like a quick wash in the background. Um, but there's the character right here. Okay, and now I'm gonna take more of the thicker gold. So you guys can kind of see the difference between the two golds. Thank you so much for all the love, you guys. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for anybody that subscribes that's watching this at any point in time in the future now. 
Thank you to everybody who shouted themselves out in the chat that said they're a small shop or would like to be followed on Instagram. Do not be ashamed. I've let you guys know to do that. Don't do it when someone doesn't say it. <laughs> Nobody wants to be that person. Trust me, it doesn't look good. But since I asked you guys to share, if you have a small shop or an Instagram you want people to follow, do it now in the chat. If you were like, how did people even get in the chat? Don't worry, because I didn't know that stuff either. Um, when I first started on YouTube, you have to have a free YouTube account. They need to be able to keep people um, accountable for anything they say. And if they get in trouble, et cetera, they need to have an account. So um, there is no, nothing's gonna happen. You can also turn off notifications and stuff, but it does help to have the notifications from yours truly. If you like to see everything I'm working on and what I'm doing. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel like I can do no wrong by Sarah and Lisa. <laughs> you guys are just like, I love it. I don't even care, I love it. Now remember, highlights are extremely important. Um, adding any kind of white highlights, uh, colorful highlights are important and they're just as important as low lights. And that's because um, it adds interest to your piece and it also brightens it up tremendously. And I already know, Faith, you're gonna say low lifes. <laughs> I know you too well now. I know you too well. I was already prepared for it because um, it does sound like low lifes. <laughs> don't don't add any low lifes into your life, you guys, or your paintings. Nobody nobody needs to be brought down. Uh, I'm gonna add just like a little bit of sparkles here and there on the character um, to get nice circles. You want to make sure you dip straight down into your acrylic white and just kind of dip, 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 dip. This will look like little little stars, little sparkles. Okay, I told you I was gonna kind of wing it with uh, not having brown right now for that. I'm gonna add little highlights to my little leaves. Okay, see how that's changing the painting? It could just stay the way it was, but I wanted to brighten it up even more. So don't be afraid to go around and add like sparkle and all this jazz to this character because these characters are full of life and sparkle. All right. Did you guys have fun today watching the live? Do you want more of these? A reminder, my Venmo is only there for people who feel like, hey, I would have paid 40 bucks for a sip and paint lesson. I gotta do it from the comfort of my own home. I gotta have the fire going. I gotta drink wine. I gotta drink coffee. I gotta eat popcorn. Nobody has to look at me. I feel comfortable because I gotta work on it in my own home, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, please, if you feel like giving me a tip, amazing if you don't or you're like i just came here to watch i'm not even taking it no one's judging you i'm not judging you i'm just putting it there because of how many people in the past have said i wish i could venmo you i wish i could do something there you go you want to buy me a coffee three bucks does it three dollars can get me a coffee to to add on to my morning routine okay so do not feel obligated the venmo is not there to make money off of this the venmo is there for those that feel like they want to give back a little bit and if you don't i'm not like oh, that was rude they were here the whole time no i don't care i do not care i'm not gonna go with my venmo and stare at it if it ends up there and one day i go to buy a coffee and there's some money in venmo awesome but i just wanted to give people the option um also you guys need to sign yours you need to sign it and make sure if you want to work on a cool um, signature, you can do that on a piece of paper next to it. And then when you find your favorite signature, you can do that. Um, I'm looking for a pen to do my signature and I'm also turning off my heater because now it is way too hot in here. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm gonna go with, you know what, I'm gonna sign it with paint. I'm gonna sign it with paint because I know how to do that. All right. Thank you so much for the subscription, Kirk. I appreciate it. Do you have a YouTube, Kirk, that we should subscribe to? It's rare when I can, like, actually get away from the thing that we're all doing as artists and, like, watch other people. But I do. I try to. I try to. I'm just having some fun here and adding a little bit of purple. Going to sign it. Little bit of water will keep this moving nicely. And because it's the one and only, I'll write one of one when I get done here. 
and I'm using the colors that are already on the palette so it blends in nicely. Okay, so we're gonna write one of one. And we need my little halo to go around it. Kind of a mid-century vibe, kind of a satellite feel. Okay. I was like, please don't be something. I don't want to. So I'm not going to risk it right now with adding the little bit of white. I'm going to let it dry. But there we go. I would love to see yours. If you guys do these in the future at any time, just literally tag Critterosity on Instagram. Here's why I give myself a very shameless shout out because there's no one. I don't hire agencies, managers. I don't like to pay for promotion on Instagram or Facebook. So here's my chance to do it. My name is Eva Lacey. I'm Critterosity. I'm a self-taught artist. I have taught kids how to draw. I have taught adults how to draw, paint, etc. Um, I shout out my references when I can find them. I like to shout out my materials, but I do not shout out my manufacturers. That stuff that I spent years doing spending a lot of money trying to figure it out but if you have material questions let me know like hey where'd you get that paint where'd you get this where'd you get these that's fine that's easy there's also an amazon link in my bio you guys can find me as critterosity on pretty much every single platform i think i'm the only critterosity in the world the only other critterosity that's out there is critterosity trading post which is an incredible incredible instagram to follow Critterosity Trading Post, one word. They do trades with all of my art. You'll find originals like this that might be up for grabs. Um, make sure you check with them. They run the whole program. I don't, so I'm the worst person to talk to because I don't know how they do everything. But it is uh, verified by me and I let them run it and they are great, great, great family members to Critterosity. We love them so much. And for those of you that are scared to trade or you think I'm gonna be upset, I'm not. If it's not for you anymore, I'd rather you trade it or sell it within our community than put it on eBay and, you know, you know, because it doesn't make me look very good. It makes me look like people don't want my stuff anymore. <laughs> but when it's trading, it means that you're looking for something for you or maybe you're just saying, hey, I know someone else in this fam would love this. Um, outside of Critterosity Trading Post, um, I do YouTube vlogs. You guys, there is hours upon hours of stuff, not only on my YouTube, but also on my Instagram reels. So please, please, please do your best to subscribe, follow, like, comment. Those are things that are free that help me out tremendously, make me look cool. And I did reach a thousand subscribers the other day, you guys, on YouTube. I... It was the tutorials, let me tell you. It was the sticker tutorials. People were like, I want to learn. So now that I know there's more people wanting to learn at this time in life, as opposed to just vlogs and watching what I do behind the scenes, um, I get so busy, it's hard to edit those videos. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, you can leave them in the chat, you can leave them in my comments. I get email alerts and then I try to come back and co uh, Right, respond to the comments. Let you guys know I, I, I know I love you. I appreciate you. If I can do this the rest of my life, I have no shame in saying I'm totally fine. That that would that would be my favorite part of life, and I'm already doing it. So thank you for being a part of it and making the magic happen. Um, if you ever do kid workshops, I'll pay. <laughs> Britastic, thank you so much. So um, the sip and paints will probably be the only free workshops I offer on Instagram from time to time for free. I'll also be doing five dollar sip and paint workshops from time to time to try to help the revenue for me. Those will be hidden. Sometimes they'll be fan art. Sometimes Sometimes they'll be originals, but when you pay, you kind of get a ticket online for the virtual workshop. If you guys heard my tummy, it just growled, told you lunchtime before I go live on Instagram later. Um, please note, uh, when you buy a ticket virtually, there is no sales tax, of course, there's no shipping, but um, you get a vote on your character when you buy one ticket for that character. So let's say I have a ticket for five bucks for Lydia from Beetlejuice, a $5 ticket for Pocahontas, or a $5 ticket for a mystery. Every time you buy those tickets, it 
puts a vote for that character. You want to learn whatever wins, that becomes that uh, workshop. So you're willing to learn any of them if you buy the workshop, but you get a chance to vote for what you hope I teach you guys. So that's kind of how that works. Of course, during holidays and stuff, I try to pick things on theme, on brand, on point, etc. And I do it all in my own style. Um, so thank you so much, Britastic. I was doing in-person sip and paints. Unfortunately, where I was hosting them does require to use the banquet room. I need a minimum of, they've now lowered it for me because they love me so much. 10 people have to be there to buy food and do the art, which I only charge $10. I provide everything for you guys, everything. That is a $40 value that most people pay at those typical sip and paints, if not more. We don't do it on a large canvas. We do it on watercolor paper. I provide you a simple gouache. You can bring your own paints if you want. But if you enjoyed this, that's what those ones are like. And um, they're done in Fullerton, California. If you would like me to go anywhere in Orange County or LA and you have a location, you have your friends, I do private sip and paints, but I do require a minimum amount of people to make it worth it. Plus there's travel fees. So just in case you wanna keep that in mind, we've already been booked once in the past by an amazing supporter that is part of the Critterosity fam and booked us for a family party. Um, please note though that I don't cater to children. Um, if your children wanna take the classes at the Sip and Paints, I usually say as long as they're willing to sit for two hours and work, it'd be great for them. So if they sat through this, great idea. If they're four years old, they are not going to sit. They're going to scream and yell and run around. And that's just kids, right? <laughs> we can't force them to do it. So I always let people know, um, I try to really cater to adults because they're the ones that have the most patience to sit there, but they're also the whiniest people you've ever met. <laughs> the adults are the worst. The kids are fun. Okay. Um, so there's that. Um, let's see what else we have, but I haven't gotten enough people interested to get it going again. We used to have 30 people, 25 people, and then it just stopped and I couldn't book enough people to get the room. So if you are local and you want it to happen, I highly suggest getting a group of friends and having your friends bring friends so it can happen. Um, she's gorgeous. Thank you so much. Oh, you're talking about the squatch. Just kidding. Just kidding. Always love watching you teach. Just started working. Um, thank you, Kay. I know who you are. Um, an art journal and practicing watercolor techniques. I need something to do with my hands while I can't garden. Oh, Carrie, love it. Thank you so very much for tuning in and saying these beautiful things to me. I, you know, I love it. You know, it goes straight to my head and my hips. Okay. I got to wash dishes and watch you. <laughs> Fantastic. You seem like more of an espresso girl than a coffee girl. She's 100% iced coffee. She loves that iced coffee. Not for a long time. I used to just do steamed milk with a vanilla flavor in it. Um, let's see. It won't be up for trade if I win this auction. Um, someday I'll make stickers and watch those videos. I love chilling with your vlogs. Thank you so much. It's a lot to put together. So when people actually appreciate and thumbs up things, it's like, you guys, I could be doing anything right now and I'm spending it with you vlogs. I'm not just, I do it for myself to look back on how I've grown. Um, but I also find it so extremely amazing and influential when I can see other artists doing what I'm doing and feel like I'm not alone. So if I can provide that for anybody else and show them like, dude, I'm not, I am not getting funded by some, um, and what do I call it? Um, women get, um, men that are uh, sugar daddies. And I always say, I need a sugar daddy for my business. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. It's a joke, it's a joke. Um, so I just wanna show people, I live a very simple life. I don't do much and what I'm doing, I love more than anything. So like I'm not out there trying to, you know, take tours around the world and have a ton of money to buy my own yacht. Instead, I'd rather just live a simple life and spend it with great people. Um, let's see. We don't mind paying. Take our money. I'm with you. I know. Let's see. Hi, Say Studios. What a sweet squatch. Caught the end, but love you. By the way, guys, Say Studios missed it earlier. They have an Instagram and a TikTok and a YouTube channel. So check them out. Um, Kay, you have, do you have your YouTube channel on here? I feel like you do. Um, thank you so much, you guys. We ended up between anywhere from five to 20 supporters watching live at different times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments in the, in the, um, the chat will slowly disappear. I don't know why it goes away, but it never stays. Sometimes you can see it remain. I've tried to find where I can do that in YouTube studio and like it just gets rid of the chat. So you won't see the chat. If you hear me talking to random people, they were there at one point. 
<laughs> and if you guys like this, I will do more free sip and paints from time to time to get you guys in the groove and the rhythm. Sometimes they will cost money and the only way to get them is to get the link by buying a $5 ticket. That will be in the future. Um, I use my Instagram stories to communicate you guys. So if you don't get the um, newsletter for art heroes and stuff, the best way to find where I'm going to be is I'm usually updating my Instagram stories every day. I do not hide it would be a terrible disservice to my business if I was not sharing with you guys and telling you what's up. Um, also, I'm sure some of you saw my post before I went live about losing um, Instagram subscribers, which is awesome. I actually, that's not sarcasm, I'm stoked. I wanna really know who's still watching me and still interested. Having the number I do on Instagram is stuff that's accumulated over a long amount of time and you guys know as well as I know, people forget about you, they don't see you, you think you have followers, you don't. I don't care that I'm losing followers. I'd rather them leave ASAP so I can keep kicking it with the best people in the world. So thank you for still being here. Cheers to you guys during Sip and Paint. And I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day. Cutesy Lots says they have theirs, but they have to make more videos. Well, hopefully this inspires you, Cutesy Lots. Check out Cutesy Lots too. Make sure you guys like this video if you had a good time. And again, the Venmo is only if you feel like you would like to. All right, you guys, have a great night. Bye. I'll see you live on Instagram in just a few minutes if today is um, April 14th for you. You'll see me live later on Instagrams and my Critterosity Ink and Paint people are getting their workshop. Don't worry, it's coming.